Hey, Kidoki. A bacon. Hello, people on the internet. If you're watching, if you're not, what are you doing? Jesus Christ. Uh, we're about to get into the first level one version of this game, which is Deverter Investigation. So I will be the Libby for this time and this time only because now there are enough characters and only Libby for you to be able to track what's going on. Well, you do want me to? Well, it's up to you. Yeah. I, I really don't care because, you know, but it does yeah, sometimes help me when we run into sort of like three games in a row where somebody, where we yeah. couldn't get together and I have no idea where we're at. Okay. And the rest of us as well. Hmm. Uh, okay. So, in essence, what happened in the previous three episodes was a funnel. I worked out some stuff about funnels that you should go to RPGnights.com, press on every single ad that you see there, and also read the blog that I wrote about the funnel and what I learned, uh, which is essentially group your initiative in a funnel, give your players a number of characters depending on the number of players, so don't just give them all four each, and other stuff. Go read the blog. Uh, but essentially what happened with those three games were a group of people arrived to view a band in their favorite tavern in the city of new avram which is a mountainous city very very far away from the sea which becomes 100 percent necessarily when you work out that there was no salt uh, available for people um in essence, that tavern then collapsed and fell through the ground after a surge of seawater. I suppose that I suppose that bit's important as well, not necessarily just the salt. Um, as a surge of seawater came up through the water, through the cracks and they fell to an area beneath in the darkness and they found sort of like a, a tunneled out area there where they ran to their freedom and some of them got out, some of them didn't. If you're watching Dungeon Crawl Classics, you know how fun it works. Um, so at the end of that, we had everybody actually had at least one surviving character left, which is almost a novelty for my games, I think. Mm -hmm. I think I always have at least one one player come out of it and they've had them all wiped out. Lose everybody. <clears throat> Lost everybody. Uh, but in the end, um, everybody came out with at least one. Some people came out with more than one. Uh, but what I've decided to do is rather than allowing all of the surviving characters to be left to play or to, to play on, uh, each of the players chose one of the characters or the one that they had um, to move forward with. And the remaining survivors have gone into a pool of replacement characters. So should they lose their current characters that they chose to play or didn't get to choose because it was the last one left, then they will have a pool of other characters that are left to play. Um, so we have Briccio, who is played by Libby Fur, who is an American displaced into New Zealand for her own reasons. Uh, she's definitely from Texas, and I won't let her tell you any different. She loves Texas and just loves everything oh, Texas. <laughs> she, she may be from Mississippi, I don't know. They're, yeah. the, they're the same. That's like... Texas, Mississippi, it's all the same. That's all right. Yeah. It's exactly the same. New Zealand, it's all the same. Um, Libby's been quite adventurous and been with us for quite some time. She used to be a Done, uh, you know, Dungeons and Dragons player, but she's branched out into lots of games, and we love her. Um, she is playing Briccio, who is a cleric, which is something new to Libby again, um, although it is sort of like a very druidic style cleric, which you'll come to know. What's your god's name, Libby, or Briccio's god's name? Um, Eldevere. El <coughs> Eldevere. Okay. Eldevere. Cool. Eldevere. Who is basically a god or goddess um, of nature, sort of thing. Uh, Briccio likes to carry around a barrel, which she pours water to, into occasionally, and you see a stroke something inside it very, very often. We also have Gruntilda, who is played by Ben. Gruntilda is our only surviving halfling. Uh, however, that doesn't mean that she won't make up for stealing everything. One good thing about halflings in Dungeon Crawl Classics is that they can spend luck on behalf of other people and 
because she's the only halfling, she becomes the lucky halfling, which means for every point of luck she spends, it gives plus two to any roll for uh, other people. I'm not sure whether it actually acts for you that I way. I think the plus two is only for me, but I can burn luck to give a plus one to others. Okay, right. I'm totally lying, but, you know, there you go. Still, still good. It is still good. So... Um, okay, so they can use you as a kind of a battery and steal your luck. because Yeah, like if I think, oh, he's probably going to die here, I better give him some assistance. Yeah. Luck is normally permanently yeah. lost when you burn it in Dungeon Crawl Classics unless you're a thief or a halfling. Um, although, as a judge, I can give luck back if they do things that's cool. But I'm the game monster. If you listen to anybody here, so as long as they continue to call me that, no luck will be given back to people that don't get it automatically. Uh, Nim Lathel is played by Tom. Uh, Nim Lathel is an elf, so he's an elf class. Um, was an elven sage, as opposed to Liz, but he goes up in levels and is the only real magical sort of character in this group. Bench Press is a horrible <laughs> pun, uh, but is a dwarven uh, chest maker, was he? He was a dwarven, he is a dwarven chest maker, yes. Yeah, um, mm. he is played by James. Uh, if you actually saw the entire large picture of Bench Press, who's up here in the top left hand corner, um, you would be horrified because he's got the most mangled horrible fingers you could possibly see uh, but bench press is playing a dwarf because that's what dwarves do uh, and essentially a dwarf is kind of a warrior essentially elves are basically wizards we have digger who is played by kevin um is sort of like a bit of a dark kind of a thief but we'll let that play out how it is oh well dark maybe maybe not um, and finally there is one player who's not with us tonight because you know he's on holidays which is a running joke <laughs> if you follow me this. Every, every other week <laughs> every other week Matt's on holidays um, so Matt is playing a character by the name of Fred Fred was the very first person to escape the funnel he escaped it in session one by climbing Dug his the, way out of a window, I think. Yeah, it? climbed out the window before the tavern actually fell to the, the ground or oh, to the right. dark. Um, Fred is found out that he's sort of like, he was a beggar, probably still is a bit, but he um, has a, he's playing a warrior and is pretty damn good at worrying. So he will appear as an NPC this evening. Okay, so. I have done that introduction just to connect players to things. If any of you have anything sort of like to describe about your character in the time that it's taken, so I'll let you know what's going on. In that you came out of the tavern, there was a big hullabaloo about it, there was a huge investigation. Uh, some of you made some coin which allowed you to purchase bits and pieces of items that you've now put into your equipment. Uh, based off the coral-like weapons that you came out. So any of you that picked them up made a few coins off that. People couldn't believe it. They'd never seen anything like that in this mountainous kingdom before. They'd heard about coral, but there's sort of like, you know, scholars and stuff like that telling people what it is. And, and quite a bit of interest was bred up around it. Uh, and Compensation. Well, no, no compensation because that doesn't exist back then. You, your compensation I'm is you're, it. you're still alive. And they go, well, aren't you happy to be alive? You go, no, and they go, suck it. And then walk off. However, like... there is a bit of um, celebrity about you for a while. And quite a few of you became apprenticed out of it. Some of you did well, some of you not so well. Uh, but it's reached the point now where you're coming to the end of your apprenticeships and maybe five to six months have passed. Is there anything anybody wants to add to that before I go into where we're going tonight? Anything that you have out of your characters? I will tell you that Matt's character, Fred, um, he was the first one out. Everybody was amazed. He decided to walk straight up to the Black Knights of Avram, who is sort of like the, the city guard, and there is a real history about them 
uh, a nobility about them and they when they were finished laughing fred finally found himself sad alone drinking in a pub where he came across some mercenaries who took pity on him and took him in and they were the mercenaries of the mountain lions and fred thrived with them um, and has become like man yeah he's he's they are quite impressed with him and they're about to send him on a mission which we'll find out about shortly what about the rest of you oh. um, the mountain lion yes it's a mercenary group that is based in new Ephraim. i uh had a bit of a brief sort of story i sort of concocted for gruntilda's time after the tavern which i'll quickly run through just to give you some idea of what she's up to cool, cool. so uh greta gruntilda hildenbrandt uh gruntilda obviously being the easier way to address her after her somewhat traumatic experiences beneath the old tavern gruntilda struggled to accept her place in the world or even to truly understand what that was anymore Few people were comfortable listening to her accounts of what went on that day in the underdark, as we put it, <laughs> let alone to accept them as truth. Gruntilda attempted to seek training in the halfling ways of combat, perhaps through military ranks. However, no matter where she turned, she was never quite of sound enough mind to be predictable nor dependable enough in the heat of battle, especially not to any military standards. She thought she'd found a place amongst the mercenaries of New Avram until she simply ended up being seen as that tweaker cuckoo halfling who never really got the job done the right way. <laughs> so vowing to find her place and seek answers to the turmoil between what her eyes have seen and her mind is accepting as reality, she turns her hand now to adventuring across the lands of New Avram and with her rusty old dagger in one hand and her far from gleaming antiquated short sword in the other, she falls in with the only folks who seem to believe what she mutters in the dark at night being you band of misfits mm. okay. nice great. that is good anybody else let's kill him and take his short sword <laughs> <laughs> did i say that you're a neutral thief mm. i am mm. i'm 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 role playing <laughs> <laughs> okay. oh yeah did we want to just skim across uh, alignments and such so that we know who's what and where or are we just going to leave that to yeah give play us a, out? give us a well we'll leave the alignments and stuff but just give us a brief understanding of where you see your characters and sort of thing so right. that was obviously so, nice from from ben oh well, i think that's cool because like i mean you're a halfling yeah um so i feel like she's uh of a good alignment, but somewhat chaotic in her actions. So. Okay. Well, Digger is an incredibly law-abiding citizen who has been traumatised and deserves compensation. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And has a, has a fascination for collecting buttons. <laughs> oh, and a, a, new, a new hobby about salt collecting, too. Hmm. Well, if you can get your hands on that salt, you'll be rich in no time at all. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, all these bloody dwarves out there mining for gold, they're idiots. Why would you? Okay. Anybody else want to salt add to their characters, or has Ben shamed you enough that you'll come back next time we play with something really, really good? I'm not, I'm not going to be shamed into anything, but Benj Press is... Uh as some may recall, was resigned to his fate and let himself drop into the river <laughs> in the Underdark, as we're now calling it. Was that and, him? Um, was frankly, him? he's as su he's as surprised as anyone that he's still alive. <laughs> he was and, the one that uh, gave up and dropped into the river. Nice. Yep. Awesome. <laughs> I love him. <laughs> and so he's as resigned as anyone to the idea that He's not long for this world, but he's tried to kill himself in the past and it hasn't quite worked. So he's off into the, the wild blue yonder to see if there's another way. So does he believe that there's a plan for him or does he just think, no, I've got to find a way to be able to off myself because everything bad happens well, to I, me? I'm thinking, I'm thinking that he actually, he's starting to suspect that there might be a plan, but he's got no bloody idea what it might be. Nice. I like him so much. So at at any point in time, he could just throw himself under a bus, so to speak. 
Oh, or into the eye of the beholder, so to speak. Yeah, oh, you can't use those sorts of words. No, that's I mean, right. yeah, wrong the game. Eye of the eye beast. The eye tyrant. Much better. <laughs> <laughs> the the floaty eye orb with with eye stalks for air. Uh, nice, I like him even more now that I see that sort of glimpse into him. I kind of regret using so much lava in this adventure because, you know. Uh, Libby, how do you see Briccio? Well, Briccio is a very happy, jolly person. Um, he loves to spend time around people, helping them with their gardens and their animals, and hopefully bringing them into the fold. Um, um, Ildevere's fold. Um, he likes to sing. Uh, he's big on giving people flowers. And just a really happy guy. He likes to be in nature as much as possible. Libby just well, described a young Tom Bogdadil. He thinks he can sing. And he's always singing, The blades of grass are blades of steel. The land remembers, the land will heal. The lady lives and always will. Wow. It's a lovely little ditty. <laughs> I think that's maybe the very first time I've actually heard Libby sing. It's normally Matt. Okay. <laughs> I am, nice. I am sure. He's going to be rocking us all off to sleep of a night time. Okay. Uh, and the final one, which I'm a little bit cruel with because Tom really didn't know which character he was going to be playing until probably about two hours ago. But anything you want to add, Tom, for Nimlathel? Yeah, she's a librarian, but not averse to punching people who really piss her off. <laughs> Especially if they've got a late book. <laughs> uh, or late, they don't pay her. The late yeah. fee is not as in, in copper pieces. It's in a, you know, a, what are they called, those things? The knuckle dusters. Late fees in knuckle dusters. I like yeah. it. It's a, it's a good group. Okay. So what has happened is the thieves and the halflings amongst us. Um, I'm sure. That... Who was that? Oh, no idea. <laughs> the law-abiding political activists who seek compensation to be written into the law of New Abraham. And the oh, I know one of those. And the halflings that steal just as much as the uh, political activists. Um, Stop that. You hear word. It's very sumptuous of you, Mark. <laughs> Adventurers' <laughs> lives matter. You hear words on the wind, or in other words, from your uh, secret organisations or your family commitments, mm -hmm. that there are that there's a big score to be had north of uh, north of New Avram. Uh, apparently, there is a dwarf who lives just in Brockskewer. Brockskewer is the dwarven kingdom that is just sort of north east-ish of New Avram. In fact, if you headed directly north, you did stumble into it. Again, full of mountains. There's the their main sort of city is in amongst it. Um, but apparently word has gotten out that there is a dwarf who seeks to rival the kingdom of Broxkewer. He started his own sort of like secret organisation, building a mine, and rumour has it that he has built a stronghold in that mine. And he's seeking to make some coin because he needs to raise some money for some armies to take on the dwarves. Uh, so that's the boring stuff that the, the, the guys tell you. However, it is heard that he has a thing called the Pearl of Brianna's Spike. And he, the Pearl of Brianna's Spike. Now, as local New Avram people, you realise that Brianna's Spike is actually the name of a mountain that's sort of strongly tied to old Avram's history. You've probably, or you have definitely never been there before. It's There are five peaks that exist around a crystalline mountain lake uh, well to the south of here near the old ruins of Avram. Um, and Brianna's Peak is one of them. Now, this pearl apparently has raised the interest of some dark and suspicious beings in the background who are willing to pay well. Uh, 
they are willing to pay, I did write this down somewhere, um, to whoever returns that pearl from the Dwarven uh, King, who is known as, what is his name? Tolga Cinderfist, I think. Talug Cinderfist. He's calling himself King Talug Cinderfist. Um, and he, he's put out that he will sell this relic, which is something really tied to Avram and apparently quite magical and powerful, but it's all shrouded in mystery and history. Oh, that rhymed. Nice. History and history. <laughs> anyway, um, he's willing to sell it for 1,500 gold. However, the people that want that pearl don't want to see Talug in power or in control of any armies or anything like that. So they're offering 800 gold pieces to anybody that can enter his stronghold and steal the pearl. So they've bought this, obviously, That's to the hard. halfling families and the thievish or the, the, the thieving organisations of New Everan, of which there are a couple. Because, you know, they're also, these, these dark and mysterious figures are also from Everan and they want to support the locals. They're all bankers. Well, it's not a good time to be a banker, apparently. But anyway. <clears throat> Christian, there's Sorry. a drop dwarf in Brock Skewer, Skewer who wants the pearl. No, he doesn't want the pearl. He's so, selling the pearl. He owns the pearl. He has it. Pearl he's of, selling the pearl. Yes, and he's selling Alec, it. Alex, your tender fist, the king, wants it, and he'll pay $1,500. No, Talig no, he wants to sell it. Is the dwarf selling it? Because he's trying to raise money to build an army so he can take on his dwarfish. dwarfish enemies so, so the dwarf selling it and the dwarven king who's selling it that's the same person correct correct right however the there's a mysterious suspicious, figures. Uh, suspicious who are willing to pay 800 gold for it to be stolen and mm -hmm. therefore not fund the army of taluk Cinderfist. Mm -hmm. and get it cheap not 1500 well oh yeah swings and roundabouts and let's face it, you're you're being told the figure from um, your bosses, so you got to figure. You're our boss. When did we have bosses? Well, you're part of a thieves guild, definitely. And I uh, excuse me, I am not. Oh, you totally are. <laughs> I am, as far as the rest of the party is concerned, I don't need you exposing my private life. No, I'm not exposing <laughs> it to the rest of the party. I'm just stating fact. You are part of a thieves guild. I'm a law-abiding salt miner. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Who, so who you assaulted a miner. <laughs> so you were pretty crappy. That was dismissed without any charges. Yeah, but it's a more believable story. <laughs> <laughs> However, um, uh, is the halfling and the law-abiding salt miner interested in pursuing this? Well, of course. I mean, absolutely. I and speak on behalf of everybody who's a halfling and they have nothing to do with law-abiding uh, citizens. Cool. Yes. Cool. That, that, I'm, that, that, I'm that. sensing some, some, some cynicism about my role. Absolutely not. Don't be so assumptuous. <laughs> <laughs> salt miner that never has any salt. No one How would far like away to, uh, was this? Question this, that at all. This dude's stronghold. Uh, the Brock stronghold. Skewer to the to the north was it? Sorry? Yeah, yeah but in north, days. northeast. It's um, eight day walk, four day ride. So in other words, eight days. Yes. Mm. Although you could ride a halfling there, but I'm still certain that it'd probably then take you 12 days. <sighs> well, yeah, because they only move at 20. So, <laughs> so do we have enough money to buy provisions for 16 days? Um, sure. You well, you've all got some copper pieces. You can pop together some provisions, and you know. Yeah. You and I'm sure that Briccio would feed us all on herbs and petals and. Well, hey, you know, I'm, you hey, I, I'm the herbalist, not him. You two have. Oh, to, yeah, but he's, you two kind of have I, to agree to do this before you get the party together. So I'm relying on you two to go. You know what? I've got a group of guys coming out of apprenticeship real soon. Although Fred's already been you know, told to to join you. You know what, Digger? What? 
we need people that are willing to steal and who else other than those poor souls that we shared that dreadful miserable time with beneath the tavern let's hey, I'm muster them to steal. together I just, I just need someone to be a meat shield in front of me yeah well we need a meat shield i'm too small for that yeah i know you absolutely are but the others are nice and big and juicy correct I love, I remember love, that what about that dwarf yeah <laughs> i love the fact here that the halfling is planning to walk into the pub and go to the guys so who's up for stealing something no 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 i wouldn't be so obtuse about it <laughs> we're investigating mm-hmm. let's say you look down on your luck aren't Who we all the rubber guy <laughs> there's this dwarf bloke with a pearl for sale mm-hmm. um righto so let's branch out and try and get in contact with these. Uh... Okay. Well, you have a standing thing that every Great. Friday or whatever they call we Friday stay in, touch. in this particular land, you all gather at a tavern with an outdoor bar. Because yes. you don't trust indoor bars anymore. They tend Great to idea. fall into the ground. So you're sitting in the beer garden or the wine garden or the spirit No one's garden. ever been struck by lightning with an ale in their hands. How many idiots that raise their sword high in the middle of a thunderstorm? I did consider taking a 10 foot pole and then realised I'm 4 foot tall, so I wasn't sure how that was going to go down. You take two and strap them to your legs. Break it in half. <laughs> you got a pole vault, it's just a high jump, really. Yeah, yeah. Right. You just Perfect. cut it into one foot lengths. Yeah, we'll carry them in your pocket. <laughs> and carry a roll of masking tape. Which great. Now, I've made, cost now I've made wooden armour. Which totally exists in that time. Anyway, um, so you're sitting around and this is the pitch that these two law-abiding citizens slash halflings who have never stolen a thing in their life, sweet look. Um, and Fred, who stoically stands beside them, going, well, at least I'm not going to have to beg. There's nothing yeah. wrong with begging, mate. It's part of the legitimate business front. Oh, it's know, a, he's, he's got a point but you make more I, money I would you. highly recommend I highly recommend you guys should all come along on an adventure let's travel north to the dwarven yes. citadel and let just have a look off, around let us be off across the countryside what say you what say hello little fellow you look <laughs> lovely with a uh, flower behind your ear and he plucks one out of his little bag and sticks it right behind your ear and whatever it takes thing. thank you so much and where will we be going uh off to brock skewer i'm sure you've heard of it north oh mountains lovely capital idea i have some seeds i can plant up there wonderful wonderful plants always need Perfect. more mountains sounds great what a chipper little fella you are <laughs> you i try Little fella, says the halfling to the human. <laughs> <laughs> I say looking up to her, him. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm just going to well, put down the line here, Libby. I love your new character. Righto, we're off at first light tomorrow morning. Well, I didn't Drink hear, up. I didn't hear the dwarf, so Have yeah. we heard from the elf? Or the elf. Do, we, um, do, I, do I know anything about these dwarven intrigues? Uh... Put it this way, Alfie, babe. You'll get to hurt dwarves. He's a dwarf. Oh, is he? Yes. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> well, they've all got pointy ears. Who can tell them apart? Dwarf. And he's got that disguised beard on. Dwarves don't have pointy ears, but anyway. Uh... Dumb Look, people. Give me an underground skills roll there. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. James? Oh. Okay. What the hell's an underground skills roll? Well, it's a, it's a, it's a dwarf skill team. that a dwarf has. Okay, you've heard of some new rumblings about a new dig. Well, new, it's been in the in the go for a while, but you ever heard of a branch out? Sort of like it's totally against dwarven tradition and dwarven factioning. And everybody's sort of like not paying attention to the old rules anymore that go there. And you're fairly certain that they might be talking to this place because the way they described it, it's around about the same area. It's these bloody rumblings is why I left these dwarves and their political intrigues. 
But it looks like I'm headed back that way. Uh -huh. Yeah, let's, I... let's, let's go oppress them. <laughs> what do you say, Press Elf? Them. Have you got anything better to do? Elf's name is Mimlathil. You can see their names up in the top. No, we just call her Elf. <laughs> well, yeah. It is fair. Sounds good to me. Every dungeon Especially called Classic game. game I've ever had, Elves were banned. But anyway. <laughs> Especially with that picture. That would have to be the worst picture I've ever seen. Um, I can guarantee you, it wasn't banned by me. It was the players. They they enacted laws that banned Elves. Elves are generally have a bad name for themselves, but they can be useful. Well, if you can't find anything else to start a fire with. Actually, to tell you the truth, I will give you a bit of background to elves in right. my game, in this particular land. Elves are generally <laughs> feral. Like, super feral, super chaotic, super all to themselves. So, to see an elven sage is sort of like a novelty for a lot of people. Somebody that can actually hold a conversation. Most elves will rather give you a smile from one ear to the other with the weapon they're carrying than deal with you just saying but there are differences in various people and obviously tom's character is different maybe you're a novelty to us all then we'll yeah so you're willing to join nimlethel yeah, if there's money going yes always need more books okay. well that's the plan Word, We're no. certainly not going along for the copulation of arachnids. A word for it. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, I just got that. Right on. Okay. Well, you can you can keep your proclivities like elsewhere, <laughs> please. You hold six legs and I'll be quick. <laughs> uh, okay. So in essence, none of you are actually employed in any way, shape or form, apart from Fred, who seems to have been told to travel with you and protect you as a group. Uh, so the, the mines themselves, or the mine that you're heading to, which is uh, known as Cinderfist Mine, um, although theoretically it's a super secret mine, however, the people that have given you the details give you a map, tell you where it is, tell you it's Cinderfist Mine. Um, the route that you're traveling, uh, so the mines are going to be eight days away for you on foot. Uh, the route that you're traveling is largely via well-known roads, because you've got to think that I, I will actually put a map in this. So next week you can actually kind of see where you are, but New Avram is already seriously up in the mountains. Uh, but Brock skewer toward the north. There's sort of like trails that head along that way because there are settlements that are further east that these trails lead to, but they're not easy trails to travel on, and you know that it's going to take you about eight days, and you're going to have to cross over the border into Brock skewer, which is the Dwarven Kingdom. Um, many dangerous creatures reside in this mountain range, however, most of them sort of like aren't until sort of like the second half of perhaps your journey as you start moving off the, the, the track and start heading towards the mine. So you start off, you buy yourself some uh, rations or you steal yourself some rations and basically I'm going to say that pretty much your people that you're apprenticed to or were friends with etc give you enough to cover your eight days on the road. Without 16. 16? Well, on the way back. Got to come back. No, they give you enough for eight. We'll, we'll wing it. That's right. You eat the dead. All right. Are we all gathered just... together and ready to... I just heard James back as well, so that's good. He just sort of disappeared. Oh, um, have we all are we all gathered and ready to go? Well, you're pretty much on the way if you want to be. Yes, well, I'm. No, before we go, okay. when we're gathered ready to go, I put my bugle to my lips and go. Ba -ba -ba -ba! <laughs> Let's go. James, Let's go, <laughs> James. I am regretting it already. Just saying. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. <laughs> 
perfect Hercules, giggling. I like it. of ancient glory, Hercules. Oh, oh, wow. wow. Well, I am really <laughs> regretting that bugle, bugle right now, quite honestly. Uh, I think it was the best. Well, at least the theme song that. for Hercules is better than his bugle playing. Mm. Well, I mean, that's a debatable fact. God, I've got to watch that movie again. Hercules Returns. Classic. Mm. Classic movie. For people that have not seen that, that movie. It was a terrible 60s cartoon he's talking about. There. No, no, Hercules Return is a 1990s Australian movie where a group of Australian people buy a cinema and they try and work out, oh, you know, how can we bring it back? And they decide to do, like, oh, we'll play Hercules on the big screen and everybody will come. And then when they get there, they realise that they got the film, but they didn't get the soundtrack. And so they're all sitting up in the film oh, thing, had ad-lib it. <laughs> voicing it. And it is the funniest Great. movie ever. You've got to watch it. If you have not heard of Hercules Returns, watch it. It sounds amazing. You will piss it's a brill- yourself It's a brilliant, like. brilliant show. It is. You, you just sort of like, oh, time to lift my nipples. Boop, boop. It's just hilarious. You've got to watch it. It is a fantastic movie. Very little You've known sold. as well. Okay, uh, so you gain, gather together. Your bugle apparently has broken horribly, and you try to do 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 do, and instead it just goes. Uh, and you. No, not really. I'll let does, him have Does he get bugle. to roll performance? He doesn't have performance. Skills are <laughs> terrible. He can roll a personality roll. How about that, bench <laughs> press? But. I'm not trying to make it sound good. Okay, well that's good. Let's see how bad you make it sound. Yeah, we need a, we need some kind of a benchmark. Oh. Yeah, yeah, this would be a good starting benchmark oh. for certain. <laughs> All right. So, what is an untrained performance check? Personality roll. You should find personality is one of your stats. There should be a little one bit of your next to that. Yeah. It's one of my. It's one of my best abilities. Let me tell you. Oh, he oh plays God. that bugle like... Is that like minus three? It. Yep. Oh, wow. <laughs> However, he does manage to build out a reasonable facsimile of what he came up with. In fact, probably Some form really of more noise. than one note. Yeah. There's more than one note that you can tell is there. Can anybody see that roll that I just made? It was a shadow roll. Cool. We see the dice... No, just like, like, yeah, shadows, that's fine. Like, I just wanted to make sure that was the case because I've got yeah, yeah, roles yeah. later on that will matter. Hidden you dice. Or not. So you start on your travel. You, you start heading out towards Cinderfist Mine, making your way at a reasonable pace, um, realising where you've got to go. You start heading out. Like, I mean, Broxkewe is a super mountainous region, so it is probably an uphill walk for you, although you're used to the mountains. Um, and you also realise that there's not a lot of uh, a lot of traffic on this particular road. You're expecting that maybe you'll come across some patrols. Uh, Regaline, which is the country that you live in, New Everham's the city. Regaline is the country that you live in. Regaline patrols head up this way occasionally, and they stop in at New Everham uh, to restock, etc. And they patrol the roads, keeping it. Well, they say free of bandits. You're not 100% certain whether they're not just getting going out and grabbing some protection money. Mm. But you make it your first day, you camp away, everything's hunky-dory, you start off on the second day's worth of travel. Mm. It stopped me at any point that you want to do anything, but otherwise we're just going to... Sort of oh, take the opportunity to look for herbs, because I'm herbalist. Okay, that sounds good. Herbalism is a good thing. You can... Uh, forage. Forage, yeah, but I'm not like many a herbalist, so he knows the good things that are out here. Well, that's uh, true. So you assume he's a good herbalist? Well, he's definitely not a good herbalist. If he I'm a, a, I'm a career... I wouldn't. I'm a career herbalist that we have... You should respect me. Okay, give me an intelligence check. <laughs> <laughs> Eighty-two percent chance is a drug dealer. Spelled, if you said is that. Is intelligence spelt S T A? No. Yes. No, it's not. No. Stained intelligence. Sure? Yeah, I'm fairly certain that it's not. 
But it's it's hard work collecting herbs. It is hard oh, work collecting herbs. And that might come into how much you receive yeah, for, if you For dumb it. people. Oh, you got to work. Oh, there we go. Oh, oh shit. Okay. I'm hot tonight. That's because it's hot up here. Okay. Turn the heater down. You do live in Queensland, so I'll give you that. Okay, um, you find some wondrous herbs. Uh, you find some, some with flowers and some with leaves and some mushrooms. Which can would... I add to my one pound of herbs that I currently have? Sure. Well, give me a stamina roll. Aha! Let's see what I did there. Hey, yes, <laughs> you fell for it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh no. no, you get a bit tired getting out there and picking up those herbs, so you don't really significantly add to your pound. In fact, you ate a couple of the herbs that you know are good for nourishment, and you pretty much balance yeah. it out. You know, bananas are herbs. Are yes. They? Yes, they are. And they're a full full food. Okay. You can just enough. live on bananas. Do go. they grow in mountainous <laughs> regions? If you eat too many, you'll die. Yeah, the potassium will get you. Well, I just want to say yeah. that my Twitch stream has suddenly become educational. So I'm going to put this yes. under an educational banner next time. Okay, very yeah. good. So you spot some herbs. But someone who can't track of his salt wouldn't know about potassium or, like, any other, like, <laughs> elements, really, so. <laughs> Nothing on the periodic table of elements exists in this time frame. Yes, exactly. <laughs> salt is a single element. It's not a combination not of anything. Well, it is true. Is, I just want to say. I just want to say, nah. <laughs> just because you're an educated rebel. Well, you know, there's a joke for the chemists amongst us. Uh, right. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I get it now. Do <laughs> <laughs> I get an inspiration point? <laughs> no, you don't. What? What's an inspiration point? I don't. Did I get a bonus luck uh, point? Luck. <laughs> Did you lose any luck? You could give me a temporary bonus luck point. No, I don't give no. temporary bonus luck points. Well, I'm he not doesn't... laughing at any of your jokes then. <laughs> he, doesn't give, he doesn't give bonus anything as a rule, I don't think. None of them and I'm getting my kobold sound effects thing out. None of them are funny. <laughs> Did your character have eight luck to start with, or is that something that reduced? Oh, me? Yeah. Do I have some luck? You've got eight luck. Where? Uh, on your character sheet. Oh, where? It's hiding somewhere. I don't uh, see it's, it. It's a statistic. It's an ability it? score. Oh, yes. Yeah. So why wouldn't I have had eight luck? No, I'm just wondering whether you actually spent any luck in the previous scene. Because that's... No, I didn't. I was, I was clever. Did. Well, I uh, you, you really should have just said then, yeah, sure, I had 18 to start with. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> but... I, I, I'm a law-abiding individual salt seeker. <laughs> Okay, so the second day passes. You can give me another intelligence and stamina check if you want to, you know, shame yourself, Kevin. I will. Okay, cool. Well, that was just stamina check. I don't mind them. Yeah, no, we're looking at intelligence as well. So, was oh. there a good? Was there a good morning bugle? Oh, well, it could have been a nineteen. Every morning there's a good morning bugle. Let's hear it then. Hercules, no. hero of fame and glory, Hercules. Dude, everyone's on board actually singing along now. People oh, with the internet, fantastic. please save me. He's feeling the... empowered with people singing along, so he's going to go for a bit more of a trill this time with a... Oh my god, I hate that. Tilda rolls from her uh, bedroll and... With the broadest smile. Well, this is actually uh, a nighttime happy bugle because I've rolled. Happy to take night. on the day. Oh, well, she rolls into her. Bed. Well, that's just a practice bugle for the morning. I'm just well, letting uh, everyone know what they're going to get. Oh, uh, it's yeah. uh, fantastic, Digga. Come on, bench press. If you're going to roll, roll. I need to do my next day. We're going to move you this need, along. You need to have a bugle song for when we launch ourselves into melee. Okay. Yeah, there's, that's coming. Yeah. Good. Right. I expect a complete collection. It's that one right there that goes... <laughs> 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 but sometimes the bugle goes... 
<laughs> yeah. Apparently, it's I'm, a, I'm still I'm working on my embouchure. Apparently, it's designed to do om, that. Embouchure. Nice. Yeah. Culture. Wow, this has turned into an educational stream. Pay attention, kids. Even though I do make this as not kid friendly, for reasons. Uh, one plus one is seven. Okay. <laughs> That's Ben's level of education. Uh, right. So day three arises as you sort of like travel up into the mountains and you begin to start going off track you're moving off the beaten path you're not moving into broxkill yet but you are moving across mountains that you now need to start moving off the uh the beaten is path. this intentional and do we know where we're going yeah, have yeah. we seen any dinosaurs there is a map okay. um dinosaurs are for a future adventure thanks for bringing that up kevin oh i always here to help Lawfully, I actually have a, oh. I actually have a, a module that I want to bring to this table, and it's full of dinosaurs. But anyway, I played that's in a game cool. where we got ambushed by a Tyrannosaurus Rex. That's what he was hell of an ambush. He made an incredible stealth roll and was hiding behind a small bush. Mm -hmm. <coughs> did the GM? We walked up. Yes, the GM was Naso. So did the, only his tiny little arms sticking out. Did the GM <laughs> roll the stealth check? You can just imagine a T-Rex snuggled down behind this tiny little shrub, his tiny little spindly fingers to his face going, tee hee hee, they can't see me. <laughs> For some reason, when you said that, I pictured the T-Rex out of Toy Story. Yeah, exactly <laughs> that. Okay, well, we'll give, we'll give the bugler his due. Are you playing in the morning this time? Because right, Absolutely. Right, on, give me a personality Because I practiced last night. Yes, he might be able to attract some bandits so we can steal buttons off. Yeah. Oh, oh God! That's him. a heck of a bugling. Fairly certain his bugle just exploded <laughs> into all sorts of flame. But we'll just say that you can't bugle for a day because you broke your I lips. I I'm covered I in my tongue. I bit my I'm, tongue while I was bugling. You don't I'm need your tongue to bugle, bugle, but maybe that's the problem. <laughs> Dude, you have to change clearly, the pictures and notes. clearly I don't need my tongue to bugle. <laughs> he thought he did, though. <laughs> that's, right. that's where it all went wrong. That's just like my first girlfriend, he says. Uh, right. What, bugling with your tongue? Yes, <laughs> well. Oh, yeah. I, I I've don't always found that. that they prefer it that way. <laughs> Oh, God. Oh, come on. I, was I, he blowing the wrong end of it? I immediately regretted that. Righto. Ke <laughs> Kevin, you go looking for herbs during the day. By the Back way, to not kid friendly. I'll save you. Look <laughs> at this, guys. Is that an intelligence check first? It is. Yeah. Oh, look at that. You actually add half a pound of herbs. This is a very prodigious area. Apparently, it's herbs grow well. Here. Herbs grow well in this area where dwarf spit falls all over them because he's got his tongue stuck in a bugle. Yeah, it's from the inspiration that you gain from my bugling. That's right. It must be. I am inspired. Unfortunately, I sure the only hope that you pick up is coriander, so, you know, 90% of you people hate it. Coriander. Oh, yeah, I hate coriander too. Yuck. I love it. Uh, I'll, buy the, I'll buy the coriander, but anyway. Coriander. Uh, you mean cilantro? Cilantro for Libby. Yeah, if you're if you're from Mississippi, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Is that what you call it now, Libby, or do you call it coriander? No, cilantro. Cilantro. Yeah. Old um, habits die hard. Americans. Do you ask for it at the supermarket and they go, eh? Yeah. Oh, it's over with the aubergine. I've got a story about <laughs> that, but that would actually... And the red peppers. Yeah. <laughs> got, a, got a story about asking for things in the in, in a supermarket that made people go, "Oh my God, should I call the police?" But I won't, just because oh. people might call the police. All the what did you say? Where do you keep your bugles? All the Tasmanians here would totally go. I know what you're talking about. Everybody that's not Tasmanian would go. What the hell were you asking for at the supermarket deli? No. Are you talking about little boys? I am talking about little boys. <laughs> Fair enough. When I moved to Queensland, I walked into a deli and said, can I have a kilo of little boys, please? And I, <laughs> I, think, the, I think the girl behind the deli nearly died. She went, I'm sorry? And then I looked around and I went, oh, can I have a kilo of Cheerios, please? <laughs> cocktail Franks. I want Cocktail Franks. 
Take off the handcuffs. Oh, God. Anyway, wow. Did you then go the call, little red skinned ones? We used to call them that here in New South Wales, but then we grew up. Well, <laughs> you people still call, what is it? You call potato cakes scallops. Now, yeah, they, yeah, they do that up here. Did. They never do that in Queensland too. It's stupid. That is, that's never made any sense ever. I walked, no. I walked when I was the same thing. Queensland, probably second week that I was there, I went to a fish and chip store. I went, oh, look at that, to my wife. Scallops are 10 cents a scallop. I'll oh, have 20 scallops, please. And I walked home and I was trying to work out where the scallops were, but I had a big bag full of potato cakes. <laughs> well, they're not... A lot, of, a lot of carbs. They're not that now. It's $2 a potato scallop now oh my god you people are idiots but anyway okay so we make it through day three with nary a mishap apart from people going dead Queensland. because of the bugling and the bugle that but I'm... we did have potato scallops for dinner fairly yeah. certain no you didn't you had potato cakes mate i i have a very restless night's sleep without my good night um tooting <laughs> but, you know, I couldn't do it because my tongue's still a bit swollen. Mm-hmm. Are we adult? Ra- are we get it got an adult rating on this show? Yes, we do. I actually put Thank it good- in there. That sort of. Thank like, goodness. It, this is not a kid friendly <laughs> channel because I, uh, I, I I know what <coughs> I'm like. Imagine imagine what some people could have thought I meant by a good night tootin'. Yes. Okay, day four. Is that where we're up to? Yeah. Why not? Uh, you can't toot today, I'm sorry. See, see how that GM oh, quickly moved the subject on? I'm still yes. banned from tooting. I'm still, I'll, I'll try anyway, but just blow air. Well, but the players <laughs> keep coming back to it. You broke, you broke your toot wait. yesterday and it's going to take a day to heal. So I'm sorry about instead that. Of, instead of waking up to the sight of you with your horn in your mouth, all I'm getting <laughs> is you going... <laughs> All right. That's right. Ben's banned from speaking for the next five minutes. Uh, right, Kevin, do you add anything to your herbs? Perhaps you find some marijuana out there. Oh, God, yes. I have to click buttons. It's the only thing. Rob, you're the one that started this. So don't complain. Yes. Oh, oh, critical. Ooh. Okay, you found some it's rare herbs. Some sticky herbs. And Healing herbs. Well, you, you've collected... Uh, what is the what is it in Lord of the Rings? Athelus. Athelus. Lambus spread. No, Lambus spread. Lambus spread. Lambus spread. Lambus spread. Ben, you missed the memo where I told you you're banned for speaking for five minutes. Oh, sorry. Okay. It you, grows on trees, you know. You find some Athelus, also known as King's foil. So I like King's foil better. So just in case anybody gets stabbed by the blade of a wraith, they're going to be safe. Because you've got yeah. some that you can chew up and stick in the wound. Do I but get a only if we've got a king with us. I well, I don't want to tell you this, but I do have a secret. <laughs> <laughs> you just need to find the king dwarf and make him chew it, and then put it in somebody's wound. It's foolproof. Okay, day five. You can toot away if you want. Do you want to toot in the morning or at night? Doesn't want to toot um, well, I'm going to toot, I'm going to toot the, the morning. My whole intention is to wake up 15 minutes before everyone else and then toot as the sun rises. Yeah, but you are a dwarf. Do you wake up 15 minutes before everybody else? I can. I'm not used to the sun. I feel it before it even gets there. Mm, but you're also the laziest of the demi. Oh, my God, he's done it. Okay, there is the beautiful tooting of the horn. It is played... Hmm, you'd think about tipping the player a copper. No. And it wakes oh, everybody see. up. And the half realises he can talk today. Fantastic. Okay, and on day oh, five... Today's going to be a good day. Well, maybe. Day five passes uh, without oh. incident. Uh, allowing, apart from, of course, Digger going off and looking for his herbs because he's, you know, he's found the rare king's foil. That's Where right. I'm on. A, I'm on a roll. It's like I won the lottery. No, he just needs stewed rabbit. <laughs> I'm gonna get stewed rabbit. 
Uh, he doesn't do real great today. He comes back and he's eaten half of his king's foil and, uh, yeah, you know. Realises all he did all day was waste his time. Uh, kind of. Comes back. <laughs> it's all good. He's got some mushrooms. You put them in a pot, stew them up. Everything's good. I tell you, now that the first thing in the morning I hear is uh, someone's bugle, I, I'm i finding that I rose merry today. Oh, my God. That's certainly some sage advice. Sometimes I love this game. Come on. Sometimes, sometimes. Don't sometimes be a I... deal, Mark. Don't be a deal. <laughs> I do find myself in a pickle. I've got to say. Uh, pickles aren't a herb. Fred, by the way, shakes his head quite a oh. bit at everybody. He looks disdainful at you all. He goes, look at what you're putting our poor judge through and glares at you all. Yeah, well, when Fred Fred's back in control of his person, that's not how Fred will behave. Well, no, that's not true. When Fred's back in control of his person, he's going to be my favourite character. Apart from Libby's. Bibby hasn't joined in on the annoy the shit out of the, ju the judge yet. But, you know, the way things are. Well, I mean... Be. She's, she's just enjoying herself. Mm -hmm. Okay, day six arrives. You can't get a word in edgewise. Yeah, well, that is true. Bench press. Are you playing in the morning? Oh, yes. The morning. morning is when the oh, playing no. happens. Digger went out really early and saw nothing. In fact, oh. ran into a rock. Although he ran into it many times because of his stamina roll. I'm <laughs> going to give myself a minus one dice because... <laughs> I didn't get up early enough to wake everyone no. up. No, fair enough. I'm dead six, by the way. Uh, oh, you still did reasonable, though. You wake the rest of them up. Yes, but I'm sad because Digger got up too early. He did. Oh. And day he, six... had a rough... he had a pretty hard morning, though. Day six also passes without incident, so much so that the judge questions his uh, two hours he spent creating random encounters for the journey to the mines. Uh... Well, today, or this evening, mm -hmm. before we eat our evening meal, Gruntilda's going to wander off a little bit and fanny about in the trees and just maybe sort of question her question herself as to why she's hanging around with these people that don't appreciate bugling. Thank you, Gruntilda, because I decided to give another chance of a random encounter because you just ran away, and it's the first part of Rolled! Not that I'm excited about that anyway. Uh, day six? What's that? Is this the next day, or are we staying No, day this, six? this is the evening of day six. Gruntilda's wandered off. She's forlorn. She's wondering about her choices in life as she considers the bugling that's going on and whether that's the right thing to wake her every morning. Or whether she should, uh, you know, kickstart something so the she, bugle can have its own recording. Uh, she's all for she's all for the bugling. She's just not so sure about her choice of companions that don't appreciate it to the full extent that she does. Well, that's what she says. Uh, and while uh, while uh, good old Gruntilda's out there, Gruntilda well, needs to... Well, Digger thinks he sounds as good as Herb Elliot. <laughs> Okay, Gruntilda, give me a luck roll. Okay, I'm good at this. Well, you are a hell? No, it's Herb Albert, isn't it? Not Elliot, Albert. Herb yeah, Albert. Herb you can be Herb Elliot if you like, but you'd be running around. <laughs> yes, very good point. I was thinking... What about uh, Herb, Herb Evil? No, I was thinking of the... What's his name, Elliot? That used to be just the deadpan guy that presented on... Hey, Elliot Goblet. Elliot Goblet, that's him. Mm. Mm. That's who I was thinking of. But Herb Elliot sort of like was also, isn't he the marathon runner? I'll just let, mm -hmm. I'll, 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 I'll just let Kevin run with it. Anyhow, Gruntilda, back to you. Oh. Sitting in the dark, considering yes. your life choices and uh, companion choices. You hear movement amongst the, the rocks travelling up the side of the mountain. Right. I turn to look. 
Okay, well, uh, and, um, the halflings have... I have kind of, vision. Okay, right. You look down the path and you actually see a group of... Um, You're a halfling. The first thing you should have done was hide. No, I don't know whether I need to just yet. She's a dumb halfling. It's okay. She's a little bit affected. Oh, okay. Um, ba, ba, ba. You <laughs> sort of have a look down the path and you see a group of dwarves coming towards you. They seem a little bit hassled. A couple of them are wounded a little bit. Um, I, I drop and roll into behind a rock in cover and attempt to... Okay, give me a hide check. Sneak. Or Yay. whatever that is on your skill list. Uh, do you want me to use stealth? That would be the one. Because I um, totally know Dungeon Crawl Classics rules. Backwards and forwards. Da, 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 da. Wait a sec, let me just read the stealth feature. There is, there is a hide in shadows. That's the one I'm after. Oh. I, yeah, okay, so I get the bonus to sneaking silently and hiding in shadows depending on your class level, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so you should have it under skills somewhere. Yep. Let me see here. Hide in shadows. You were looking on the wrong tab, weren't you? Oops, I rolled it twice. My apologies. You did. I'm going to the take first the first one. The first one was the 18. Oh, no, sorry. It was the second one. Was The, the first one was the 5, I think you'll find. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, you're right. I, you roll into the shadow nearby you, finding a large rock that does not block the full moon that is shining down upon you. And you roll up and you poke your head over to watching the dwarves and you see several of them sort of like glance at you. You see there are six dwarves wandering at this channel and they've all spotted you. You see the... I say, uh... <laughs> oh, good evening, uh, gentlemen. Are they all male dwarves? Or, well, they've all got beards, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> There is a mixture of female and, and male dwarves. There is sort of like a transgender dwarf amongst them as well. Just oh, great. Dwarf. They all still have beards, though. You know that, right? Well, you know, they're dwarves. Uh, okay. Okay, but you see that there are... Um, uh, one of them steps forward and he has his... I'm going to say short sword, but I know that's completely wrong. Uh, he, <laughs> he unhoists his war hammer. From his hilt. He I say, yeah, no need for that, no need for that. Well, then why did you try and hide, she says. Oh, self-preservation. It's a natural instinct for halflings. I'm sorry about that. Don't thought, take it personally. I thought a natural instinct for halflings was, you know, cooking a cake. And you hear a couple of titters of laughter from somewhere behind him. Oh, yeah. Oh, look, only my uh, well-skilled culinary brethren would do such a thing. I'm far too... Far too useless for, for, for cooking. Oh, put uh, your what, fingers what, in what your pocket, you? calls one of them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he says he reaches down and feels his pouch. Her pouch. Might, must be the their, man's their, their pouch. Their pouch. Their, <laughs> they, it's, it's pouch. No, I don't want to make fun of these people. Go for it. No, uh, absolutely not. No, um, that's what, right. What are you... What do you do out and about? Here? Well, you guys look like you've had a bit of a run in there. Do you, do you are you in need of somewhere warm to sleep by a fire for the night? Oh, look at us asking help from a halfling. Mentions one of the. I know oh, you didn't Shut ask. Up. I'm offering. Shut up! Says the one that stepped forward. Look, we've got nothing against halflings. In the distance, you can hear some bugle practice happening. <laughs> <laughs> All their halfling companions that can't play bugles. Uh, but, oh, you know, no. we've lost a couple of people, be... and you'd be right there. Uh, we're looking yeah. for, uh, some humans, feral looking. Came over the hill, came down upon us like they were freaking idiots. Oh, gosh, well, you're the first people we've encountered, uh, well, in days. Well, that's because... Not the a single soul. I have heard quite clearly that the judge should have raised the chances of bloody, you know, uh, random encounters upon this path because the number he yeah, chose I've is rather crap. I've heard his dice are not great. But um, that's on him. Yeah, fair call, fair mm. call. Well, anyway, look, the offer's there. If you're in need of, uh, in need of warming your toes and perhaps... Uh, sleeping amongst, you know, other weary travellers that are not akin to wanting to skin you alive or anything silly, then by all means, Sounds good. come along. You hear one of them say, uh, look, 
I, I much, wink with my left and then my right eye and say, what do you say? <laughs> as much as we'd really like to accept your hospitality, the punishment of killing our sergeant and a couple of other of our good friends requires the punishment of death to these human barbarians. And we're going to yeah. carry it out. So if you don't oh, mind, sure. we're going to head down this path. We're going to avoid well, the best light of luck to you. because it's not terribly great. And it's obviously why your bugle player who we feel like as a dwarf is sort of like not getting the notes off right because the blinding light from your fire is causing him to not be able to move his lips in the right way you're probably Ooh. right yeah you could be right well look uh best of luck to you and if i hear you all scream in pain i'll be sure to set about coming down to assist if it's required but you all look like hardy stout folk with you know, blood to spill, so... Well, you know, we're dwarves. Carry on. He says that's what we're meant to look like. They all look amongst each other and they nod, they high-five each other and they move off down the path, realising that they probably should have asked for a personality check, but they liked you. Brilliant. Rather than just I'm gonna killing you as a human spy, because you're just a mini scam- human. I'll scamper back to the... Uh camp then and uh just explain that um there was a bunch of weirdos roaming around the bushes no i'll give the account of what uh, happened there explain that they uh were seeking some humans that apparently ambushed them and they didn't want to come and sit by the fire and listen to the bugle practice (laughs) i did offer Apparently nobody cares. Uh, most of the people are asleep already. They're just wondering why you ran off crying about bugles. Okay. Maybe I'll just go to sleep then. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, the night passes. We move into day seven. I am going to do something that historically is very unlike me. But I'm going to roll back time to the fact that you knew you were going to investigate a mine and offer those people that perhaps can't see terribly well in mines the chance to purchase or add torches to their equipment slash well no torches i'm gonna say torches not lanterns i'm not that kind i'm a horrible human being torches well, you're a halfling. You can see in darkness. You just yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm okay. The dwarf's probably okay. The elf has what? I just added a torch. Oh, the elf has infravision. So we're talking, looking at Briccio and Digger currently. Did yeah, Digger? I just in my equipment. Okay, no worries. And Digger had definitely some torches. So all good. Now look at me trying to almost prove that I'm a human being. You're definitely no game monster. Oh, Not thanks. tonight. Thanks, Ben. That means much to me. Hear that, you're, Libby? You're a... That's what somebody, you know, who, who appreciates their gene feels. Are we dead I mean, yet? To the greatest <laughs> judge. <laughs> okay, so we're moving to day seven. I guarantee I'm not going to get another number one of the number on the roll that I'm rolling. Oh, what a surprise. Okay, day seven, are you bugling in the morning or is... You better be. Is, uh, Every morning's to bugle. I'm pointing uh, this out to dig, you before. Digger, digger beats you. Digger's awake. He's, he's... Oh, just because I was dealing with the GM. Well, no, I'm sorry. The digger is awake. He is out there. He is doing a very bad job of being out there because he's waking up so goddamn early that the sleep is in his eyes. Um, But his stamina... He's not getting the inspiration that got him the early herbs. In fact... I'm looking for the nightshade herbs. They only come out at night. With with that role, he actually had some nightshade herb plants that he decided to plant and then realised, oh, shit, we've got to keep moving. He left him behind, so he's lost some herbs. Well, shit. Hmm? He's awfully good at doing things repeatedly, even though he's done them wrong. And bench press, like, I mean, I know that it was a voluntarily thing the day before, but you do wake up and there's still no digger. 
So that roll of a d20 is a bit presumptuous, don't you think? Well, that's because I rolled it at the same time as he rolled his well, dice, and his so just came out. I saw his dice come out a good three seconds before yours did. Oh, look, I can't help the internets, can I? But fine, I'll roll it again. <laughs> I've got mine on a hot bar. Well, yeah. per- perhaps bench press will learn that that tick that trick. Well, has anything happened on day seven yet? Uh, oh. No, there was some bad bugling and annoying some, people. Some bad herb searching. And uh, no random encounters, which the judge really, really, really wishes he did change the numbers for. Day eight, <laughs> you, you, you're on the downhill, downhill spiral. Like I, mean, I thought we were going up into the mountains. Well, okay. No, Kevin, no. You said day eight. Yeah, I said day eight, and then as soon as I said that dice rolled. I haven't rolled my dice yet. I'm... I'm no, you... I'm not accepting those rolls, although I really you might should. Not get the chance, you might not get the chance to even get out of bed yet. You could be stabbed in your sleep. I really, really should, because with an intelligent roll like that, he's picking up rocks going, oh, look, herbs, and licking them. <laughs> but um, how, how are you like... going there, James? With your, Are you ready mm-hmm. to roll for your bugling? Yeah, I don't give a shit about Digger anymore, by the way. Okay, cool. Three days in a row, he's stuffed me over okay Libby it sounded like you wanted to add at that point go for it oh I would like to keep my eye out for some um, bitter oyster mushrooms I mean fungi well you are in a party of fungi <laughs> and um, it glows in the dark and grunt Hilda um, okay no worries so you go searching for stuff give me an intelligence check then Oh, not my best one. Well, the way we roll stats in Dungeon Crawl Classics is it's ever going to be the best one. You didn't find any. You, did, you didn't find any. Uh, Digger is out early in the morning licking rocks because, you know, Bench Press said I don't care about him. And I oh, got another roll. Just say. Uh, what's in can, can he come across? Can I, um, have a conversation with Briccio where um, you explain to me what these mushrooms might look like that you're desperately seeking, and I'll keep an eye out for some. Well, they look like oysters, little flat oysters, brown, so beautiful. Oh. Like and, little tiny umbrellas. Uh, sort of, um, just on one side. Um, oh, okay. The ones that like a, uh, you see on the edge of an oyster, it has this little curly bit. It flutters in the water. Oh, yeah. It's in mid flutter. That's how okay. they grow. I've got to say, I love right. it. It's just describing something that lives in the sea. Lovely green, brown color. I don't even really know what's in the sea. And they grow upon each other, kind of like in stack. Okay. Well, I'll keep an eye out. Yeah. That would be very nice. Hey, I see your flower has kind of wilted. Here's a new one for you. A different color. Thank I you want so to much. have a look inside her barrel. Um, My barrel? That's what her own personal belongings. Had you, been, had you taken me up the offer on day one to help you forage the herbs, we could have been picking some to plant in my barrel because it's full of lovely, lovely, moist... <laughs> A dirt that's just so full of nutrients. Anything will grow in it. I have a cast iron plant in there growing. Um, and I could always grow other little things in there too. I think she's a vampire. Okay, at, no. that, at that point, whilst uh, good old Briccio is pointing and, and expanding upon the iron plant that lives within her barrel. Uh, you hear a scream from above you and you look across and you see sort of like coming down with a rattle of, of gravel and uh, stone coming down. There are a bunch of humans all bloodied and frenzied rushing down towards you. They raise above them in their hand. Oh, crap. Should probably... There we go. I knew exactly what was going on. 
They have um, hatchets and blades as they rush down towards you intent on killing you. Oh, oh a veritable fortune. I'm going to dive behind a rock. <laughs> right. I'm going to dive behind him. Well, we're going to roll some initiative after I... Okay. After I work out exactly how I used to do this. Oh, I've already done it. Wow, I'm good. Okay, so hang on a moment before we roll initiative. I actually have to add you to the combat tracker. <clears throat> yeah, create a combat first, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And there. You, you can now roll initiative. I need to add Fred to it. Roll initiative. Okay. Isn't that the Superman thing? Can't say. I can. That was the Superman thing. Uh, <laughs> you can find it the bench press theme. Mm, no, it's the Superman thing. Uh, right. How do I roll Fred's initiative? Where's initiative on the old character sheets, people? In the middle of the front page of the character sheet. Thank you. Between AC no, and speed. Yeah. So back in the middle. However, Nimlethel, our elven sage who is sitting back and considering the, uh, the you know. Situation. The situation and the humanistic position of all this, which is strange seeing she's an elf. Come on, Tom, roll initiative. Uh, okay. If I must. If he must. Must? Oh. I guess stop bad. drinking whiskey. Anyway. Okay. Fred. Oh, that's me. Slash Matt. Fred shakes his head angrily at all of you for the uh, pain and suffering you've put a judge through. Uh, and targets the first of the savage humans that is going down these hills. Uh on ID name, Savage Human. There you go. That's what you're seeing. So he shakes his head and he rushes forward, targeting this guy with his speed 30. No, okay. Uh, target onto that guy. Mm. And he raises his short sword and rushes forward with an attack. Are they that close? Yeah. Why didn't he get a detail? Um, he seeks to cut his legs out from... Oh, crap. Too many dead dies. The first one actually worked. D3, got a 3. Oh, it's a bit awkward. Should roll the detail with the attack. Why is there a... There are no opponents. I think he's got to roll the deep first. Oh, sorry. Hang on. Uh, he got a three. He hits the dude, but the D die. I'm gonna have to roll D die until I get a three again. That's a three. Cool. Uh, so he lashes out with his short sword, trying to cut his legs out from underneath him, which he succeeds at, and rolls damage. And not only does he cut his feet out underneath him he actually cuts him off at the thigh the savage human falls to the ground dead eyes already locked in a rigor arterial blood spurting into the air okay apparently uh apparently that's what happened and i, I couldn't have explained it any better nimlethel tom How many of these horrible people are there? Three left. Three. Like in our party or attacking us? <laughs> there are six in your party. Yes. Three left. <laughs> Sorry, five and yes, three who completely agrees with the judge under all circumstances. Oh, yeah, that Fred. He's a real butt licker. <laughs> I don't know, I just wait and see what happens to oh. defend myself. Good boy. Graham knows it much better. Briccio, the squishiest of the uh, of the characters. 
Well, you know, looks at the situation and thinks, well, happiness is not going to help this. And whips out his stuff and whacks one of them. <laughs> I love preaching. You can pick any of them. That's fine. It's very flower power. Happiness is not going to help this. That's the first concern. <laughs> um, Happiness is right with the stick. Are any of these any closer than any others, or do I just pick one? Just pick one. They're all pretty much rushing down upon you, wielding I their short tools or their axes. I click on my the hand. What's that? The little. I click on the die by by the little hand to oh, the you, right of the little hand. You kind of need to target one first. Which one do you want? Three, I'm two, or four. Them. I just drop it on him. That that works. Yes. Yeah, three, two, or four. Oh, okay. Three. Yes, it does. Yep, cool. You hit. Good work. Because apparently a 10 hits an 11. Oh, hang on. Yeah. That makes that's, sense. That's this educational stream. No, 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 I'm completely wrong. I'm looking at his initiative. His AC is actually 11. What, is, what did Nimluthal do? Uh, Waiting to see if anyone comes and okay. be mean. Nimlothel looked at her elvish powers and went, hmm, I'm not great in combat. I'm going to hold back and hope people kill them. I think that's pretty much what Nimlothel did. And Brigio yeah. lashed out with her staff and smacked an unrespecting human savage right between the eyes. He almost fell Take over. That. <clears throat> And then Briccio obviously presses the down button. Yeah. I was typing. Well, don't type. Press. Digger. <laughs> I will attack the, 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 the number three. Aha, uh -huh, there, I worked it out. With my sling, firing a stone waffly at him. Mm, good job. Oh, goodness. That sling flings out towards savage human number three, smacks him right between the eyes, cracking your head. Your head. You hear his skull crack, and you almost, well, you're not 100% certain, but you think you saw it cave in just as he hit the ground. What happened? Happens when you don't have any brains inside. Together, doing anything, <laughs> even foraging. Well done. I love Bridget. I really do. Such a supportive hmm. um, party mate, Bridget. I'm fairly Fantastic. certain they got followed up by a high five. But anyway, dig it, dig it. Any points going to help? Oh, there we go. Bench press. I have All it right. hot bar. All right. Well. You because I might as well find out now as opposed to any other time later in this campaign. If I want to use my mighty deed of arms to blow my bugle in a aggressive combat way so as to intimidate <laughs> these other persons, mm -hmm. oh, <laughs> is that a appropriate use of that skill? Should you? Hell yeah, you're a friggin' dwarf slash warrior. Your D die is there for your abuse. I mean, use. Um, All right. You roll the D die How first. Do I that? I've, I've worked out that you roll the D die first because. So, okay. where do I find the D die? Uh, that's a good question. So, uh, this is the terrible music defense. So, if you go to the actions, you'll see yep. the steed up the top. Under, underneath weapons. He's a uh, trans bard. I don't... Oh, there, I see it. Yes, roll so you, that. So you click that, and that's your D die. So you got three, so you succeeded. You have blown the horn yep. in the face of whoever you're going to target. You haven't targeted anyone, by the way. Right, um, so now I roll my attack, I think. Yes, you can roll your attack on the target. And that will actually include that D die. Yep, so hang on. So if I target 
then you, someone ne- you don't necessarily need to target them you can do what libby did which was go to the combat track and drop your dice on the person that you're attacking that's but, right or you could do that them. yep okay so now you roll your attack die you will notice under your attack die if you're using the chisel or the hand axe etc the bonus it has become your d has die. yeah Yes, it's increased. By the yeah. way, I'm doing all of this explanation for people that are watching this to work out how to use Fantasy Grounds. Use Fantasy Grounds, and when you purchase Fantasy Grounds, please use a banner on the thing about Fantasy Grounds that I'm going to supply on my blog soon, because that does not in any way, shape, or form earn me money. Yes, it does. <laughs> um, right, okay. Uh, so yeah. my intention is to blow this horn and get this guy to submit himself in an intimidation. Okay, that's fine. You also, I'm sure, if you attacked him with a hand axe, smacked him in the face with the hand axe. In a yeah. emphasis way of going, stand sure. down and cut his head open in two. Good job. Ba-ba, ba-ba. <laughs> I'm a dwarf. <laughs> he stood down, though. He stood down and sat down, and he are going to have to probably retrieve his hand axe from the middle of his skull. Right yeah, I feel a bit drums. No, no, it was the ear- eardrums burst. Mm. That's totally what it was. It wasn't the hand axe embedding itself in the middle of his eyeballs. Okay. Okay. Pressing. Oh, look at that. Gruntilda. Hello. Hello. Um, all righty. So I've just watched uh, a couple of these guys get murdered. And um, there's one remaining. Is that correct? You've seen three of these guys get murdered horribly on their run down towards trying to murder you. My apologies. Three of them. Yes. The, the only person okay. that stopped and decided, you know... We should just be zen about this was Nimlathel. Although you do see Nimlathel trying to climb under a rock. Right. Um, okay. Well, I'm probably going to have to follow suit and try and just end this combat by attacking this remaining human. Um, one thing that we're going to have to work out here is with my two weapon fighting, mm-hmm. I'm going to have to actually roll d16s. As opposed to the that is correct attack action d twenties is that right? I think so, there yeah. should be at the top of your th- actions. There's a little button. Ah, two click. weapon fighting. Yes, correct. I've ticked it. I was about to say right. that, but you know, James is just all over this. Thank you, James. Totally. All right, so totally. I'm gonna. Totally wasn't gonna say that, but anyway. So have you targeted this guy? Yep. Cool. I have. All right, so my first attack. So, so that's rolled. Had D16. Oh, it did actually roll a D16. Good. It just looked like a D20. Yeah, I, I know that. because they don't have D16 pictures and okay. stuff like that. By the way, I can't. That's see, fine then. I cannot see the two-handed fighting stuff in this, but anyway. As in the I'm rules not, for it, do you mean? Or? No, I'm looking at Gruntilda in the action section. Can't see two-handed. The, uh, up at the very top. Okay. Uh, at the top to, of the weapons, there's a little tick next to two weapons. To files. the left of Deed. Seen it. Thank you. Brilliant. Okay, so then we roll damage. Mm-hmm. Boom. Okay. Roll your second attack just because, you know, second attack. Okay. I don't know. Sucks to be him, I think, is the moral of this story. Mm. Well, then, you kept, your, you kept your flower behind your ear. Excellent. That's <laughs> what it helped me along the way, Bricho. Uh, Gave nice. me that motivation that I needed to strike true. Well done, everyone. We did so well. Yeah. Huzzah! As Fred says, because, you know, that's a thing that Fred would say. And there, uh, was, there was bugling aplenty. Yes, okay. Ben. We, we need a tune, a victory tune. Well, there was tooting on the way there. 
But I'm happy to play again for you. Can can we please stop tooting? My lips right. are a bit parched, though. A little chapped. <laughs> oh, it, it shows. It shows. I say, take a rest. Save yeah. it for the night time when we're heading yeah. off to bed. Oh yeah, that I'm not funny. a yeah. I'm not a post combat bugler. I I hand you my water skin and say, drink up. Thank you very oh, much. God. It says round 16. How do I stop the rounds? Can you reset it? I know we're going to take time out to bury these poor humans. They'll be great for the soil I, and great things will grow out of it. It'll be I huge. would suggest we remove any potential soil contaminants from their pockets first, Briccio. Um, like happy to assist with that. Axes. I have a shovel. Okay. Do uh, you see the halfling? Um, more than likely... Bigger. <laughs> uh, start go rifling through pockets as the, at the moment they bodies hit the ground. Did one of them have a sword? Uh, I will tell you what you see. The a good bit? judge will have created a parcel. Well, a good judge would have, but you know, it's probably the only. Amazing thing. judges don't have time for that. It's probably the only freaking parcel I haven't created from the. Point of view from what I've got here, but anyway, the circus. The circus, hang on. Okay, I, I do actually know what they have, though. So as you go through their pockets, they're not naked berserkers. Uh, they kind of are. They don't have any armor on in any way, shape, or form. I, so... I feel like they've all potentially got less blood than they had previously. Did uh, you tell us about your encounter with the dwarves, Gruntilda? Yes, I did. Yeah. Do you reckon I these humans assume, might be the people they were concerned about? I, that's a fair assumption. I yeah. honestly, yeah. I wonder, you do they have any? And put them on stakes. Do they have any dwarf blood on them? Uh, do you have a DNA kit with you? <laughs> As it happens, um, I just added one more inventory. Chemistry. How's he going to manage microbiology? Oh, us dwarves, us dwarves can recognise dwarf blood. It's a bloody different colour to the rest of you blokes. <laughs> okay, hang on. I'm about to find it. I'm sorry, Libby. I'm uh -huh. just going through the ninety percent yeah. of things that I've just created to find out that dwarf dwarf blood's just a better shade of red. You should use it. the bundle system. That's really handy. It's a more solid red, isn't it? Okay. It's yeah. more stout looking. You yeah. can have, what were they, four of them? Four loincloths. Two indiscriminate chest cloths. And two short swords and two hatchets. A short sword! Woohoo! Short <laughs> sword's mine. I already took it while you are stealing their money. Too bad. Okay. Buttons, I'm selling them. their buttons. It, could you go over that again, that besides the short stores and the hatchets? There were... It was just no, the that's cloths, it. Loincloths. Loin I'm sorry, I can't hear Rag, you know Rags, loincloths, nothing in particular. Oh, okay. That's the, right. only, the only equipment they have, really, are two hand hatchets, sorry, and two short swords. Two hatchets and two short swords. Correct. Yeah, that's what I got. Thank you. Excellent. So a loincloth could do me well for my morning bugling. Yeah. No. I'm just, <laughs> just going to say no. In case you're extra for it. Um, I'm happy, happy to take a hatchet uh, as a backup weapon should nobody else require it. No, I have... I have my hand axes. I'm not interested in any of that material. It's almost a battle yeah. axe for a halfling. Yeah. yeah. Also good for uh, making fires with. Did Action. anybody else take anything? Uh, the boys, I yeah. think the short swords have been short taken. Sword. Did both short, both short swords get taken? Uh, one will do me. Okay. Otherwise... I could use one. Okay, so it sounds like uh, Nimlethil and Digger have taken a short sword each. Who's taken the hatchets? Ben took one hatchet. Yeah, I'll grab one. 
Cartilda has a hatchet. Who took the other one? Was that Bridgia? Did Bridgia or Fred can have the other hatchet? Fred doesn't want it. Ben took a hatchet. It's been a Ben, Ben, that's Ben's prayer. Sorry, Cartilda. Yeah. And Fred gets the other one. Uh, okay. He says, as it's forced upon him. Take this, Fred. Fine. Don't tell anyone. Fine, he says. The, 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 the judge doesn't want it, but I'll take it because I'm a team player, he says. I'm just thinking the future Fred might appreciate the fact that he picked one up somewhere. Mm, no, he doesn't. <laughs> we take a wee break. And I mean a wee break. We will take a <laughs> five minute break. Okay. Bye bye, people from the internet. I am turning you off for five minutes. You cannot hear us. Sorry.
turning back on the internet so you can actually see us you saw seen the pretty picture you can see that they haven't actually used up much of that space so probably could have kept it on one monitor tonight but anyway uh the players handled those berserkers pretty well and the rest of the day goes by and they get close enough to where the map says this mine may be and so we can they, smell the mine you can, day eight. You can yeah this is uh, the the night of day eight as you get close enough to the fact that you can actually see what's going on you come to the point where you're looking down from the the perspective that you got to a oh not to that because i pressed the wrong button uh to the entrance of the mine and i'm just waiting for it to pop up there it is so i need to put your characters onto the map so while this is happening mark was there something you wanted to tell the people of the internet about this module oh why why thank you james i'm gonna stop you from dying from rocks falling later on uh, <laughs> And Briccio, because Briccio is my favourite character, quite honestly, right now. Um, the module that I'm running, it, like, I mean, the, the game that I'm running is my game. Uh, and it's sort of like a point of view where I've gone, you know, this is what I want to run. I have a story that I'm going to run. But it is actually a, um, a module that I found online. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to name that module at this point in time because my players are cluey people and they will go out and read that module and they do know that there is a lot going on uh, before the fact that uh, they, they reach the end of it. Um, I will say that the start of the module has been completely changed uh, but what I have kept is a lot of this top level mine map stuff although it will not be in a form that they've seen because the map stuff that's been provided is whatever. Anyway, long story short is that at the end of this, when we've reached the climax finale in two more games time, just putting it out there, I will reveal the module that I've done. It's an Osric module um, and one that caught my eye. So there you go. It's not all me, but I have changed it a lot. Uh, and now I'm going to share a map. And it's a really, really sort of bit of a dodgy map, to tell you the truth. And Hello, map. I need to lock players into the version that I've got. So hopefully that's changed. And I need to add some stuff. Stuff. Now we're looking at the entrance of the mine. This is the entrance to the mine, correct? The entrance to Cinderfist Mine. I, don't, I apparently need to keep that open. Wheelbarrow. Is there a sign that says that? Yes, absolutely. There is a big glowing neon sign from a cyberpunk reality that points to the entrance of the mine saying this is the entrance to the Cinderfist mine and it has glowing arrows saying PCs <coughs> please go here <coughs> can, uh, can I, like, I, look just, at it. I don't think we should go in there can I just ask if it was like just inside the entrance there is that a new bugle uh, well gotta say quite honestly because I'm about to make things sing and they're not going to <coughs> reveal a bit of a description which will answer your question just saying two dwarves oh, stand guard at the entrance to the caves or no. to the mine both are wearing chain mail and wield oh, they're not wearing chain mail by the way uh and wielding large war hammers i think they're wearing hide armor but i may be completely wrong hang on let's have a look at them just gonna go there Oh, no, they're totally wearing chainmail. They've got shields by their side. I paid attention. They appear quite vigilant. Each bears a shield with the coat of arms of the Cinderfist Dwarf House. J 
Just inside the doorway appears to be a large horn. You assume is used to alarm those inside with the mind, within the mind to attack. Now this is darkness. Um, quite honestly, they are doors in provision, but apparently they use torches, which is inflicting problems with them. But you can see what you can see in front of you. Okay. I'm going to just ask a general idea. They don't appear to have seen you at this point in time. And in fact, if I was going to go with what I could see. By the way, on the map, what you can see to your left and right and a little bit further to the left for some of you are muddy pools of water that are that okay. it's sort of like a, a, a bit that dips down. But you can see that you're on a path that leads down to this mine. For some reason, the dwarves can't see you at this point, even though they really should be able to. But, you know, they're vigilant, but they are paying attention to their navels as well. Logistics, that's mm. the problem. Logistics, they didn't want to add any more to the map. <clears throat> I, I s whisper to everyone, we should take cover and discuss what we're going to do. Yes. <clears throat> Over that's here. That's sensible. Great idea. Okay. Let's assume that you've taken cover and you can see this before you arrive, but I wanted to derive the picture. Yes. Excellent. Are we going to well, attack them? Well, done. Um, well, I think that the... Uh, they were in the chain point mail. Of, the point of the mission was to sneak in and take something, not alert the entire mine to our mm. presence and perhaps die in a bloody mess. I can yeah. be not... I can Probably deal with them, says Fred. I'll cut them yeah. down before they can even run to that bloody thing. Yeah, I, I'm going to... Uh, chain mail is a two-sided oh, coin. The, the fact that they're wearing chain mail makes them hard to kill, And but then again, they're wearing chain mail, and that's worth a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. um, yes, but, uh, I mean, the, the 800 gold that we are... I mean, uh, <clears throat> the... Uh, the... Uh, mission is to uh, 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 just to uh, not kill everybody. Uh, we need to move sneakily. And do we have any pain. means? Does, does anyone have any means of doing something to distract them away from the entrance, which would allow us to sneak in? I could cut one of their heads off, says Fred. What? What? What if? What if somebody went and tooted in a bush over there? <laughs> it's someone who's been practicing a lot. <laughs> what does that touch for range? Touch or more mean? Touch is like melee range, where you can actually touch. Is that you're talking about, like spell casting? Mm -hmm. For this paralyzed spell, is touch yeah. or more okay. or more? I'm looking right now. Probably need to read the description for the more. I'm looking at it. Hang on. Paralysis. Would be yeah. Similar to a ranged attack, it would take a higher DC, perhaps if it's further away or something. A lot of the clerics died. He preserves his enemies from raising a hand upon their bow. Touch or more. So you just need to make a melee attack that hits. Uh, I can't use my ranged weapon. Okay. No, no, absolutely not. Touch means you have to make a melee attack and strike. You need to be within range to actually. Uh, hit, hit them or touch them, so to speak. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, if 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 we can create some kind of a diversion and attempt to sneak past them, would be fantastic. Um, or I could know, cut their heads off, says Fred. You could, <laughs> um, but I don't think we're going to go down that path, Fred. Mm. How are we going to divert them then? Well, I realistic. I've got a sling. Uh, so let me see here. Uh, does anybody have like a chicken or something? We could like sling a chicken across there against a the wall and see if they go. What the fuck's that chicken doing there? <laughs> or I'm just spitballing here. I, I could chop one of their heads off, and their head could go. Why did my head got chopped off? Says Fred. Horrible. No, Didn't mean no. like a headless chicken. No, no, no. To, well, wait, Breachio, do you have any uh, form of... Well, I mean, Chicken. either of the herb, herby people here? 
Is there anything we could do uh, to perhaps create some sort of a concoction that might create a distraction? Have you got any could, bang weed or... <laughs> we could start a fire over to the side and, yes. and fan it up till it makes a lot of smoke, make noises like fire, help, fire, and hopefully they'll come running over to it. Like out of sight from where they are. <laughs> Not yeah, directly a... in their sight, because then they can't see. They can see what's happening. But if it's around the corner, yes. Friend. Can we do that? And then, and then, uh, all of us still manage to regroup over here to get in together, or are we going to split the, the party that's here? The pla no, no, no. That's that's the plan. We right. we do that. Do it. Does anyone that's have any ventriloquism spells or illusion spells? Yes. Um, Got my short sword, says Fred. Look, uh, yes, look, I, I'm okay. That sounds like a great plan. Let's do I've that. I've got some herbs which probably get extra smoky. Awesome, <laughs> says Fred as he begins to walk down Brilliant. the path. And, and I'm told if we, get Fred, the dwarves close, if we can get the dwarves close enough to that smoke, they will calm down a lot. Sounds great. Let's do that. All right. Uh, I would suggest then that we go and attempt to start a little fire. Mm -hmm. And then everyone else can kind of just wait here, and once the entrance is cleared, you can scurry on in, and then we'll skirt around and, and uh, ourselves. rendezvous okay. within yeah. the Literally. entrance. That's, That's the plan. Eager and Gringtail are doing this. Yes, oh, we're we're small and or sneaky and fast. Yes. So the uh, the rest of you. We'll wait for the dwarves to leave so it's clear and run in and then we'll run in shortly after. Can I cut their heads off if they come towards us, says Fred. You can. Yeah. If they, if they try can. and stop us, you can do that. Sweet. Great. Wait, he says, pulls out his short sword. He bends down towards some rocks and sort of looks suspiciously at those dwarves. He goes, they're a bit right. short. I'm going to have to aim low. I, I go over to Bench Press and say, listen, Bench, look over there. You see that window? One day, all of that will be yours. <laughs> Digger and Gruntilda, you must promise me that you'll make sure this fire will not spread and burn everything around us. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll make sure it's surrounded by rocks. It'll be uh, very well contained. I am an expert with fire. In fact, my mum said I was an arsonist. Is that sure that's what she said? You say yeah. I can get that whole window. I think your mum added a hole on there as well. Yes, and the curtains. But excellent, digger. You need a you need a little flower behind your ear too. Here, poke. Oh God! Great. Okay. We've got the power of nature on our side. So let's, okay. let's yeah. attempt Should to I move. Should I No, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> Do you oh, let's see. Say a blessing over their good fortune. Digger and Brun Gruntilda, give yes. me a stealth check as you try to move to the side to create a fire. All right. Now, this, this stealth check thing, do I need to spend luck before or after? You can do it at any point in time. Luck spending it, can happen at any point. You can even do it after the result of the roll, right? Yeah, yes. that's what I want to know, yep. yes. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, um, can I use my uh, sneak silently skills? I, I, yes. I thought my answer covered that. Um, so you've got sneak silently, stealth, and hide in shadows? Yeah, yeah. hide in shadows, yep. But is there a stealth skill? Or is no, that an no, there is no. Okay, so we need sneak silently. Sneak abilities. Fuck. Uh. <laughs> says Gruntilda as she walks across the area. <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> I'd, I'd be I'm using gonna, some luck there. I'm going to use some luck there. <laughs> Time for me to bugle. <laughs> <laughs> um, Fred, yeah. You're up. i got to spend some luck. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, just... Just quickly, give me two seconds to check this quickly. Uh, so when you there. when you use luck, do you have to allocate how much you're going to lose all at once, or can you roll, then roll, then roll, then roll until you succeed? Uh, luck is sort of like I'm going to spend this amount of points because you can see the roll that I made, or no, you can't, and you, you go, I'm going to spend this amount of luck, 
and... Oh, but wait, 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 wait. Uh, hang on one sec, because... If it's a known DC, I will tell you the known DC, but this is an opposed DC. And the dwarves are, as you will see in the text... Oh, did I not add the text? No, you didn't. Okay. Bad you. Okay, hang on. Oh, well, it's there a few times now. <laughs> yeah. There's almost, um, a, almost a paragraph for each of us. They are, there's six, there's like, six of the buggers. No, there's three, but I'll add another three just in case. Um, you'll see they are very vigilant. They are. Correct. They're quite, they're quite vigilant. That's well, if right. they're so bloody also, vigilant, why didn't they see the fire before we set it? They're also some distance away. Because you haven't yeah. lit it? That's, okay. They should have been predictive then. That's very essential, so, Can I Can I just read you this little thing about sneaking silently? You can read because me anything you want, it's, ben, because it's, I love the tones okay. of your voice. Thank you, Mark. So, it says here, sneak silently is never made against the target's attempt to listen. You rolled against a hard DC, as noted below. And what so does the DC below say? So the, the DC for moving across stone surfaces is a DC of 10. Cushioned surfaces such as grass or carpets are a DC of 5. Moderately noisy surfaces such as creaking wooden boards are a DC 15. And extremely noisy surfaces like crackling leaves, still water, or crunchy gravel are a DC 20. So is this... What was, the one solid... be what was the one before 15? Uh, yeah. The 5 is for grass or carpet, or there's a stone surface which is a DC 10. Okay, right on. Okay, fair enough. Not saying what it is, but, you know, I totally was just checking whether people were paying attention. All right. Well, I'm going to use two points of luck to increase my roll to an 11 because I get plus two for each point of luck. Mm. Is that the way it is? Have you taken the luck off? I'm doing it right now. Okay, that's cool. Did I mention that it was a gravelly surface? No. Um, no. <laughs> Well, that's lucky then, because it's a stony surface. I'm fairly sorry. I assume I so. I a gravelly surface, but anyway. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to roll that. I'm trying to impact my luck score. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, uh, then in that case, I need to roll above. I need to scroll all the way above all of these text things that somebody did that. Uh, have a look at uh, Digger's roll. Oh, Digger! Moves like a ghost. That's me. Across the area. In fact, may have even added a woo to it. One of the dwarves shivers and goes, Was that a ghost? Looks at his mate. The other go the other dwarf goes, Don't be stupid. That's our <laughs> ancestors. Um, I whisper in whisper in his ear, these are not the fire you're after. <laughs> He nods and he goes, mm, you're right. Turns, shakes your hand, goes, you're right, I didn't see you. Um, as you move across and uh, somehow the halfling luckily makes it, even though she tripped, fumbled, fell, ran into a rock, went, oh, fuck, and then rolled across the area <laughs> and to the point where the fire is going to be bought. With, with waving her fingers, she said, I wasn't here. And walked off. That's right. And I went, you know, you're right, but only because of that fella. And they pointed, uh, they pointed Digger. Digger. Excellent. Okay. So now let's go about setting a fire, shall we? So, do you, is there something you want us to roll to attempt to actually, like, pull off yeah, no, this? That, that was the set the fire and getting to the entrance roll. No, oh, was it? <laughs> that was the getting down to the point where you can set the fire roll, Kevin. Without being seen, yeah. Well, but when, we're setting the fire where they can't see us, so how could they see us? Well, you shook hands with them and walked past them going, you can't see me, and they went, you know what, you're right. And with uh, the halfling, they went, luckily right, we can't see us. what's the next roll? Move on, what's no, the next roll? There's, there's no next roll. You set the fire where you wanted to set the fire. Um, cool. Now the... I, throw, I throw appropriate smoky herbs in there. Okay, cool. You've got plenty of smoky herbs. They take 
a deep breath and hold it. <laughs> That's exactly what I was going to say. No, do, do, no. But don't inhale. Now, the, tr the tricky bit is not exhaling. Okay, you set off the fire. Um, move yourselves to where you're setting the fire, by the way. Um. You mean the map actually goes further out? I can't see anything. It's dark. Well, you've got. I assume some that we're going vision? like around this way somewhere, aren't we? Grantilda I was coming over it. to the left. Yeah. Somewhere over to the left. Gruntilda has some motion. I'm just set the fire in a here. box to the left. Over there, where I can't see anything. There's no light. How oh, digger, 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 digger. Is it daylight or moonlight? It's um. Underground light. No, it's not underground. You're in the open area at the moment, but it's very cloudy and not great. Uh, I'm going to allow Gruntilda, who has some kind of vision, to lead you in the general direction that she's travelling in. We're not in the caves yet, are we? This is at the entrance. Yeah. Right. Yes. So there'll be starlight or night time it's not pitch dark it's just dark that's right and so i've moved you to the point gratuita has taken you by the hand yelled oh fuck ouch ooh, ah, ooh, ee, ah, ah. <laughs> wandered big past bang a... walla walla big bang perhaps <laughs> wandered past a dwarf you've shaken hands with him going you did not see us the dwarf went you know what didn't didn't at all because halflings are lucky and you're and then suddenly bench press rips out his horn and says off to panama and goes running around in circles okay bench press is um, miles away from you but okay uh, there's a movie reference there which very few of you would get mm. it's really old no i got it but off to panama i'm old but Arsenic and old lace. That means something to me, but I don't know what it is. Cary Grant movie. Oh, God, no. I hate Cary Grant, so that's why I don't Oh, how can you hate him? He's incredibly good. Mm-hmm. Sure. Okay. Rocks, rocks fall. Only, <laughs> only okay. uh, somebody dies. So they set the fire and the guards went over there? Well, you can see that there is a bit of chitting going on and you can see that the fire bursts up from where your companions went. But the guard seems to be seeking outward. They don't appear to notice the fire off in the distance. Because we're, we're, we're yelling and going, fire, fire, help, help. Children, there's a child burning. Are you that, seems, that seems odd when they're quite vigilant. No, we don't need to feed the GM. <laughs> hang on, Just go blow your off. horn and be quiet. <laughs> uh, hang on, I'm going to apply a an effect to Digger, who has just lit a fire. Fire. I'm going this. I, Is there I, an effect I, called Pants on Fire? I've got a disguise Hello. ability. I will disguise myself as a burning child. <laughs> oh, that, perfect. That seems a bit rude, but okay. Uh, effects. If dinos if Tyrannosaurus Rexes can hide behind bushes, then I can I can pretend to be a burning childish dwarf. Okay, you should now be able to see the area that you're in. I can, yes, I can yeah, now. Cool. Okay. That's um, me. Grudera is taking you over there. The dwarves are idiots if they cannot see that, and they do actually see a fire over in that direction. It is okay. A... So our escape path will be. To go over there. That's directly And then through. around there and then in. Kevin. Yeah. It's directly through a deep pool of murky it's, it's water. It's a metaphorical line of path. Okay. Uh, can you uh, tell me, that, can you tell like me your actual path? 
Well, the, there's the edge of the pool, right? If I like just to tell, like, if I was to go this way, mm -hmm. is that skirting around the back edge of that muddy pool? You should and be. And then, like, this way. Are you taking him by the hand? Well, yeah, I'll lead him that way, so as I can see around the muddy pool. Okay. I'll say, you know, we've done our, you know, burning baby sh sh shtick, and then took off. Hey, I just want you to know that we're not going steady. Okay. I'm just going to hold your hand for a while. It's as far as it goes. Okay. That's good. Come around over then, here. I know that the yeah. light is traveling with him, but I need to unlock that. I need to get a light. And I need to apply a light over here. Lights. Uh, it's Dodge. Why is that not applying? <coughs> oh, for God's sakes. I had this work working perfectly earlier on, but anyway. Can you place a light, like in a... I could, and in fact I was doing it exactly the way that I'm doing it now, but it's not working anymore. There's a purple light. I can see that. Um, Will that do? No. No. Uh. Hang on. Add light. That would help. Presets torch over here. Get that light up for people? Yes. Sweet. Uh, can you reshare the map because I accidentally closed it trying to remove my purple circle? Thank you. It's definitely lit up now, Mark. Cool. I'm trying to remove your circle as well. There Thank we you. So, as those lights appear, these doors appear, move up in this direction. Oh, brilliant. It worked flawlessly. Yeah. And we're going to move sneakily and scuttle down this way, or well, in a roundabout fashion. Okay, can you give me a move secretly? Or... Oh, look, I'll give it a go. I'm really good at this. Let go of my hand. Okay. You coming with me? We're going to assume that it's against plain rock at this point in time. Yeah. Well, that's up to you, but yeah. Digger, I hope you put some valerian root in the fire because it make, it'll make them go to sleep. Did, I don't think he found any of that. He only had um, king's foil. That's right, we just healed them, so if they were ailing for anything, they were going to be at their best when they come at you. I they thought feel... I heard he found some cannabis. No, uh, <laughs> yeah. My personal stash, thank you. That'll just make them giggle. Yeah, no, they'll get hungry and have to go la have lunch early. Okay. They might not want to leave the fire. Grantuda yeah. <laughs> is currently standing down in the various area whilst the dwarves walk up to the obviously... Lit fire to hey, make look, them go. A giant, a giant bugle. I wonder who might want to play that. Can I have? I'm assuming that you, Kevin, dears, a hey, move silently, Rob. Oh God! Sneak silently. Can you move across to there? Come on in, guys. Uh, Fred decides to charge forward. Quietly. Well, he does try and do it quietly, but, you know. <laughs> not especially, probably not especially good at it. Fred's just trying to find the button that allows him to move forward with a check. I think it's Alt. It's the only one that I haven't tried. Okie dokie. And he makes a check. Red. Mine. Oh, he's pretty good at this. Mm, not so good. Yeah, so he uh, moves across the area and you hear him let out a little bit of a shriek. Ah! As he trips over some rocks, moving oh, forward towards the area. 
Okay, so this leaves us Riccio, Nimlethel and Bench Press. In that order? Um, any order. What do we roll? Well, you need to show me where you want to move. I don't move your tokens know. first, yeah. Distance, what's my distance? Should be on your character sheet what your movement is. There it is. I, it was too small for me to see it on the screen because I'm blind. Okay, right. give me an agility check. Agility? Mm -hmm. I realise I have zero stats. Well, you won't be able to move at all. Okay. No agility. Uh, bench press trips over the same rock that Fred just did. Let's have a yell of, oh fuck, but he's not a halfling, so it gets noticed. Uh, Nimla, Phil, and Briccio. Wow. Apparently Nimlethil is moving 45 foot and then back. Because we well, lost one. Well, whatever's about the right distance. Mm -hmm. Okay, give me an agility check. Makes it across, seemingly unnoticed. Brittio. Hey, if the dwarf was the one who was noisy, he's a dwarf. He'll just act normal. Mm. Uh, the dwarf definitely was actually not one of the ones that would act noisily. Fred did. And Digger did. No, Digger made. Oh, it was bench, it was bench press. Who's the dwarf? Oh, yes, bench press did so far. But also Fred. You said Ben tripped and he was noticed? Well, and if you're holding it's... off Briccio, if you're not going, you know, and moving in with everybody else, then sure. Or are you Wait. moving forward and hoping it's... that you don't get noticed? Can you hear me? Yeah. I was asking, didn't you say Ben trips and he... If well, moves I'm, I'm, I'm pointing at Libby. Are you moving with everybody? Yeah. Okay, so move to the point that you're at and we'll play it. What happens? I was just trying to get it in the notes. Man. Okay, sorry. In that case, Bench Press definitely tripped and so did Fred. Oh, I thought Fred didn't. Okay. I got that wrong. Okay, I moved myself already. Mm, can't see the movement. Well, it's got a big green line going from me to where I want to be. Bridgio. Oh, crap. I lost the map. It's in the backpack. Thanks. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm going to move Briccio so that any line should be broken now. Okay. Um, do it again. Mm hmm. Okay. See that? Give me an agility check. Nailed it. Nailed it. Okay. So, Fred and Bench Press seem to attract a fair bit of attention as the rest of you move across. Now, for the people that have made it inside the mine entrance, you can see ahead of you, um, probably Where it about, branches off, is that probably, what you're talking about? Well, yeah, you can see that it goes off to the left. Ahead to the north, there are a lot of fallen rocks. But you hear a little bit of a yelp from the dwarves to the left as they hear bench press and Fred let out K 
curses. We're going to go to Combat Tracker. Roll initiative, please. Okay. Gruntilda, you are the first up. You can note that the that Fred and Bench Press have made a lot of noise coming across this way. Okay. I am concerned that they're going to draw the attention of the Dwarven Guard. Mm -hmm. That's and my intention. Therefore, I'm going to turn and prepare myself to when the opportunity arises attempt to ambush the dwarven soldiers as they return to the area okay so you're holding your action yeah basically mm -hmm. i feel like i'm close enough there that i can rush them as they come into view and probably won't notice me okay what's the map called the map is called mine entrance mine entrance um, so do you want me to just uh, arrow down and then yep. when that circumstance takes effect you will let me act? Well, as soon as you say I want to act. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay, Fred. You're going to have to answer yourself there, Mark. I, I am. I'm beginning to look <laughs> at this. Uh, Fred, who needs to go alt? I thought it was going to be one of those situations where you're like, Porge, who's Porge Barrison? Who's playing Porge Barrison? Hello, Porge Barrison, it's your turn. Oh, that's me. <laughs> Rocks fall. <laughs> dies. Uh, Fred raises his weapon as he realises, hmm, probably shouldn't have tripped so much down there. Things are going to go bad. Digger. Hmm. So the rock fall up north, does it look like a collapsed section? Yes. So obviously the way ahead will be over. I'll have a well, look. Well, possibly. Like, I mean, the rock fall ahead doesn't seem to block the entire area. You could I'm actually. Gonna I'm going to go reconnoitre. So I'll go over there and see what I see. Do you see what and, I see? And then I go up there and see what I see, and that'll be it. Okay, you need to give me a agility check to get up that way because that's through the rock fall. Mm. Okay, you make it to about this point and find the rocks are a little bit hard for you at this point in time. That you was can, very nearly a one. You can see your way across, but it's going to take a bit of time. I'm a good climber. That's what they all say. Uh, hang on. Right. Hmm. See one of the drawers move back as he's noted either bench press or... The other one. What's the other one's Fred. name? Fred. Fred. As he calls out, Oi! There are people running in the mind! In Dwarven. So if you understand Dwarven, that's what he says. Yeah, I understand. What did he say? He went, Oi! People are running in the mind! Nimlethel. I know an extra language, but I don't know if it's Dwarven. It's a guy who thinks we're in his mind. Chaos. Uh, I think we should uh, attempt to try and be hidey. Okay. Hidey away from Stabby. Right. Well, I'm going to get to this point 
and you're going to need to give me an agility check as you try to make your way through some rocks. Mm. Just sort of struggle your way to about here. Um, okay, you can see that rocks make the traffic through this area difficult. The gaps in the roof show that the cavern and the mine is not as well maintained as most mines of dwarven construction. Uh, okay, you reach about there. Is there anything you're particularly doing? Uh, no, if a uh, sword ready in case in a desperate situation and need to stab someone. Okay, I don't know. But when you say roof, how high is the roof? Uh, the roof you sort of see large gaps in, which is where those rocks have come from. Right. Give me a down check. Oh, you did. Good. Bear with me for two seconds. I press this button to make it go. Going, you need the swing button. Oh, yeah. Okay, sorry. Uh, righto. So a dwarf moves across from there. There. He runs Ooh. in. Seeing people trying to run into the area. Bench press. You have made some noise. Dwarves are running towards you. All right. Well. Do I, I don't know the particular dwarves from this mine, do I? That's fine. Uh, no, you don't know them on a first name basis, but you can see them running towards you with weapons in hand. Call them dwarf. That's, I mean, hey dwarf. You do know oh. that they're part of the Cinderfist clan, but you do also know that the Cinderfist house is not recognised. Fair enough. Well... Not real dwarves. I, I will. No, real dwarves. Just not recognised dwarves. Oops. I just said... Okay, here's a difficulty. I don't think my dice have reset after I did my deed last time. Yes, so I still have the extra no, bonus. You just need to press the D when you make the next attack, but you need to move in that direction and then say what the deed is first. Right, sorry, I was just it just it still has the stats as though it was Yeah, and it will have the deep. same stats because you just rolled the D dice, but you need to move to where you're going. Yep. Well I am going to what my intention was to throw a hand axe okay. to catch them. And um To what purpose? What's the deed? The deed is that I will throw the hand axe um, will it to return? <laughs> that doesn't happen. <laughs> it's a magic weapon. You cannot break the laws of physics, Dorothy. It might be a strong draft of wind. Stop it! Let James get out what he wants to do. <laughs> well, my intention is to throw the uh, the hand axe at uh, one of the dwarves and to um, 
in, effectively indicate to them that uh, uh, I'm here as a, a dwarven warrior and that I have a right to be here. Okay, so uh, does that mean the hand axe misses, but purposely so? Purposely misses, yes. Okay, right on. So give me an attack. You've got the bonus, which should come after the fact, but anyway. Could have just insulted their mothers. Okay, apparently you just did horrible things to their mothers. But which one with the target was it? Oh, number one. Okay. So you send that through. You hurl the axe and he realises... This person means business. Even though apparently he went before you... Oh, he did. I moved him. Okay. All good. You held the axe. He realises that you could have hit him. Hmm. But you didn't for a reason. Yeah. I want him to remain where he is. Mm Mm-hmm. Can I move then? Mm-hmm. So I'll move over to here. Bridgio. Mm, I'm going to move up and get that horn so nobody blows it. Okay. I think it's a like a Swiss horn, you know, standing on a stand. It is a bit. Oh. Just drag yourself to where you want to be. Oh, wait a minute. Stupid males. Weird. Damn it. Okay, you hit that uh, point. Mark, I just want to make a movement. Uh, as an action before the end of the round, obviously, since I held it, if that's possible. Mm-hmm. Sure. So I just want to move um, against this wall here and attempt to hide in the shadows. Sure. Uh, now, this is similarly just against a DC, and if it's in a dimly lit area, it's a DC of 5. Would mm-hmm. you call this a dimly lit area? Yes. Thank you. Lucky. Yeah, that's my middle name. Okay. So, X round occurs. What? At the horn? No, you're at the horn. You're going to guard that point, I'm assuming. Yeah, it's a big old war horn type of thing. It's not something you can pick up. Oh, I can't pick it up? No. Yeah, no. Oh. Well, then... It's so effectively an alarm. Yes. Right. If you remember the Lord of the Rings sort of thing where they blew the horn, it's that kind oh. of horn. Well, um, I would have done something if I'd realized it was that. I would have done something like stick dirt rocks in it. Okay, that's fine. You can do that. You'll sabotage the horn. Yeah. Give me an intelligence check. Oh, you always pick the worst one. <laughs> I'll pick the right one. Okay. You shove dirt down the horn. Nobody's blowing that at this point in time. Alrighty. Not unless you've got. Google playing experience. <laughs> and even then... Okay, so do we... Are we... New round of initiative? Yeah, is that what we're doing? it is. I'm trying to roll all initiatives. Roll all initiatives. There we go. We rolled the initiative again? Do you? Yep. No, I rolled it for you. Well, how come I'm under four? Because uh, that's what it rolled for you. 
Oh, no, I'm under 18. I see it. I see it. Sorry. I'm 18. Alrighty. Digger. How the hell did I get up front? I'm doing likewise. I'm going to hide around the corner to get the jump on them next turn. Actually, why am I doing that? That backstab doesn't. You've got to use the actual. That's right. I'm going to get. I'm going to get my blowgun out. Okay. All good. Richie. Yeah, just a minute. Um, hey, what will I do? Hmm. Hmm. Well. I'll hold my action. Go. Hit the damn button. Man. Fred! I hope that's me. It is. Mm. Excuse me. So he sees the one sort of like pause, but he sees the other one charging in and he rushes forward, short sword raised, and targets him. Ooh. Fred's going in, guns blazing. He is, because, you know. Fred. A, he, Fred Smash. He's a warrior. Fred he's Smash. Fred Smash. Uh, again, characters, Fred, actions, uh, D-Die, he does something with his D-Die that doesn't come off. And he misses with his short sword as he weighs it through, thinking absolutely 100% I am going to destroy this fella. And he doesn't. The dwarven soldier that was running in towards you sort of pauses. He looks at the hatchet below that he's 100% certain that his uh, compatriot that threw it, uh, bench press, totally took out of his inventory. And he pauses. Yes, I did. Man. If you have a look. It's all right. He believes you. Uh, he picks up the hatchet and looks at it and he realises that could have hit me right between the eyes. Uh, whereas the second guy doesn't even notice that at all and targets Fred. Because, you know, Fred. What a butt. Uh, Fred's dead. Uh, he swings his warhammer in that direction and smacks Fred. Ow! Jesus Christ! Shit. He smacks him, Fred heavily. And Fred goes, hmm, shit, regret that. So uh, Matt's character's not even going to get to be played. Well, choices were made. Fred's really... Fred's dead. Regret it. No, he's not dead. No, but that's the, that's the movie quote, isn't it? Yeah, that was my, that was my <laughs> attempt to Drop quote the movie Red Bull. Tom! Tom? It's an elf. It's an elf thing. Give him a minute. Don't see anything coming from Tom. If it was Matt, I'd say his boom mic was up. I would say the same, but it's Tom and pretty much his boom mic's always down. <laughs> Ready action, move on. 
Okay, we're going to say that Tom moves a little bit further forward because he's standing amongst rocks. What did he do? Tom's disappeared. Gruntilda! Hello. Um, I am... That's everybody. Mm. Pretend we can't hear Ben. Yeah, that's going to work real well. Um, I kind of don't want to expose myself, but also... Well, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> now, now. <laughs> These flowers behind everyone's ears are starting to make me feel frisky. Uh, I probably also am not in a position to actually see the combat between Fred and Dwarf Soldier 2, so... You certainly I'm saw still... Fred rush forward. Yelling yeah, yeah. something about killing somebody, and then you heard a sickening crack, and Fred sort of like bounced back slightly. Okay, so maybe, maybe. Um, uh, what's the distance there? I could probably get to this other dwarf. Oh, I don't know. It's not my intention to fight these guys. Yeah. Um, but. Oh, gosh. Okay, I'm going to... I'm going to wait for them to... Well, not that they're going to do that this turn because they've already acted. Metagaming. Oh, I'm just hiding in the shadows still. I'm just waiting in the shadows. Yeah. Okay. Bench oh, press moves pressed forward. It for me. I did. Bench press is going to just... He's going to have to... Hurt. Get in there and defend Fred. Mm. Drag the body out. Uh, this this dwarf that you've ran at though is like stopped and contemplated your threats, right? He did. He had. Yeah. But I can't actually get to the other one with my movement. So. Mm -hmm. Hey, you're attacking the one that's sort of like holding your hatchet. Yep. I'm telling him that's mine. <laughs> Idiot for picking it up. Smack. <laughs> you could, like, D die and run down there in a flying, like, dragon kick and kick the axe into his face. And... Okay. So, to be sure that he was targeting that guy, so. Oh, sorry, I didn't target him, sorry. You didn't dwarf and soldier one, you just did. You're gonna attack him? Nine damage to him. Oh, Jesus Christ, he's still alive. You must have a hell of a strength score. And can I follow up with a shield bash? Uh, do you have two handed weapons and did you start with a d16? Something with um, dwarves that allows me to make a shield bash. Okay. That's the case? Sure. I'm just trying to find it so I'm not misleading, but... So you're doing two-handed fighting? Two-weapon fighting? I don't know whether it works the same. Let me see here. I think it's just a D16 shield bash. Dwarf, uh, weapon training, shield, mighty D, do, 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 sword and board. Dwarf always gains a shield bash as a second attack. Shield bash uses a D14 to hit. Go for it. He adds his D died to this number, as with all attacks. That's a hit. Target, but you know, <laughs> yeah, I should have targeted him. That's Six my points bad. of damage. Yep, you smack him with your shield and he drops. Huzzah! That um, was a warning. <laughs> it's a warning that killed him, but you know, it's a warning. <laughs> do I do does Gruntilda hang on here? I'm gonna roll initiative. Well, yeah, cool. That's What does Gruntilda want to do? 
Uh, I was just if she heard what sounded like a chainmailed dwarf slumping to the ground. Mm, no. No. Okay, it's fine then. Did you roll everyone's initiative? I'm about to. Okay, cool. However, Gruntilda now hears that. Gets to act first. Cool. Alright, then I'm going to actually move out. Uh, my maximum move, which is 20, so I'm going to have to come around here, which is 10. Mm -hmm. And then this way which is about 20 and that's about all I can do and I will assess Fred's condition and obviously be aware that he's taken a fair old whack he does Fred's not looking terribly healthy at this point in time I'll scour at that dwarven soldier and say back off we will avenge him Grr. <laughs> That's it's it. The dwarven soldier says, Hmm, he's not dead yet, and he looks like he's about to hit me with a short sword. Which Freddy goes, Yes, I am. I was bolstering his morale. Uh huh. Cool. Uh, Fred makes a. No, this time it's a hatchet attack. Oh, yeah. Uh, Aim for the nose. Uh, trying to knock him down and does knock him down, so we make a hatchet attack. Uh, which is this one. Nope. It's me. So he doesn't. Oh no. Well, my understanding of the D die is it still makes him knock him down. So the guy sort of like falls backwards onto his ass. He but doesn't follow through with it. And attack, right? I think you've got to succeed in both. Like, just check it under the warrior rule. I think you've got to okay. succeed in both the deed die and then the attack. Okay, no worries. In that case, I'll go with what James is saying. The guy goes, mm, really wish I fell over back then, but I didn't. <laughs> oh, <laughs> bench press. So he Wait, so Fred did not knock him down, or no, he did? No, Fred, Fred didn't. In his mind, he did. He was visualising that. He knocked him down yeah, in his sure. mind. But the guy goes, yeah, no, you missed. Bench press. Oh, I'm just having a read of it. It's, uh, D die, determine the D's success. <laughs> uh, yep. And then if you have a combat action... Doesn't increase damage. Warriors D die determines D success. This is the same die used for a turn. Right. Yeah, so if the deed is deed die is three or higher and the attack lands okay. the D right. succeeds. The attack did not land. Made the guy feel like he should have fell over, but he didn't. Bench um. press. All right, so I will advance on to this dude. Mm -hmm. And I shall attempt to um, use a deed to uh, chop him down, cut his legs out from underneath him, mm -hmm. um, intention being to Knock drop him, him to the ground so he's not effective. Yep. So we roll the deed. That certainly works if you hit. And then we roll the attack. Definitely knocks him to the ground. What's the damage? And we roll the damage. Okay. So you. Then I'm going to shield bash him. <laughs> okay. Oh shoot, what's that? Oh man. Did that hit? Yep. Hang yeah. on a minute, my computer just went bonkers. Hang on, hang on. The intention being to knock him down. Okay. 
and you do you sort of like smack him with your axe, hand axe, and then you beat him down with his shield and he cowers beneath you. Riccio. Okay, um, let's see, I'm gonna go over here. Oh, I can get over there to Brand <laughs> and lay hands on him. Sure thing. Well, I'm gonna do that. It should be a lay on hands roll from the skill. Should be able to target Fred with this. Yeah. Um what do I press so, on? Okay. So control and click on Fred's name in the combat tracker. I don't know. How do I grab the spell? Okay, with the lay on hands it should be in your abilities. Yeah. Okay, so you need to, uh, you've rolled it or not? What? You need to target. So you Control. target Fred. It, it should be in your magic. I've targeted Fred. It's okay. Uh, then you go to actions and. Yeah, I see with the actions. And I just hit the little star beside lay on hands. Oh. Nope. With the lay on hands, go the magnifying glass. Yeah. And do the check roll. C H K. Double click. Oh, okay. Succeeds. Same plus two dice. And then what? So is that the? Healing that he receives. Well, it is plus two dice. But what heal do we roll? Yeah, what heal did I roll? That's what I don't know. Um, this is dependent on his alignment versus her alignment. Is that correct? Yes. So if they're of the same alignment, he gets two boys. hit die. Yeah. What's his hit dice? Um, I'm neutral. What is Fred? Fred's neutral. So you get two hit dice. Is he human? Yes. I'm human. I mean, Brickyo's human. It's the warrior uh, hit dice. Oh, warrior hit dice, okay. It's a warrior, it must be at the end, is it? Oh, I didn't mean to do that. It's all good. It's okay, we'll pretend you didn't. Shoot, I'm sorry. I didn't know oh, it's D12, seeing it, give me two D12 rolls. At the same time, or just one at a time? Just one at a time. Eleven minus four is seven. He dies healed. Oh. Now he's healed. Well, kinda. Hang on. Much damage got done to him. Well, I think has it applied it automatically because yes, it's, it, um, it did. Yeah, nice. So he's. Yeah, but he's sort of like we rolled three heals thing. Oh yes, yeah, she rolled the. Uh, was the four not supposed to be there? No. Hang on. Mm, damage for him. Eight points of damage to Brit. Uh, to Fred. Fred. Which put him up. So eight. still would have been, still would have been fully healed, right? So we need the last two rolls. Was it eight or above? Yes, it was. So he's fine. You go in. You lay your hands on Fred. And he is reinvigorated. I did 13 and all. Yep. So it becomes Nimlethil's turn. 
Good job. Yeah. Uh, I just uh, keep out of way of mean people. Okay, that's fine. As you move that way, there is a few rocks around that area. Are you doing anything in particular? You can move to that point. Anything no, I don't particular? think so. Okay. Just like try and be inconspicuous. Okay, no worries. You moved at that point and tried to hide away from the battle that's going on around you. Yep. Uh, okay, the soldier is targeting Fred and swings his warhammer again. You bastard! Mm. Fred, you bastard! And strikes out at him. You killed so Freddy. I need glancing blow this time. Digger. All right, move out there to see what I can see, and I'm sneaking. Give me a hide from shadows or sneak silently. Sneak silently. Oh, 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 my foot come to sleep. Uh, yeah, they heard that. Tell us to wake up. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Bugle for it. Sneak silently, right? You read at that point, nobody seems to notice you. And I will... Can I get a slingshot at the dwarf? Of course. I shall do so then. Oh no, blowgun shot at the dwarf. What is the range of a blowgun? Do they have ranges? Yeah, it will have incremental range. Way. Sorry? Not much. Hey, mm -hmm. I, I, I've been taking lessons from the bugler. Mm -hmm. Is it 30? Okay, is it 30? So completely yeah. screwed. 20. Uh, hang on. Uh, Freeze the blow dart in. Blowgun has 20. 20 feet. Oh, yeah, that, that's normal range. Yep. So, I do it with backstab. And do that. Backstab on a blowgun shot. And I believe with a... I didn't target it. That's the problem. Well, a nine misses, regardless. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. can I just... Sorry, can I just raise a point quickly? Mm -hmm. With the lay on hands, because the caster was of level one, it cannot heal more than one dice, regardless of the roll outcome. Wow, rude. But anyway, that's Dude. for future reference, I assume, because it's hard to kind of backtrack that now. So. Well, it's not that hard. We've got a complete points. coverage of... Turns it. out Fred's dead after all. <laughs> no, he's only going to be two hit points worse off. Because he took eight damage and the first dice gave him six hit points back, so... Well, the first dice actually gave him four hit points back. So it's four hit points damage. Yeah, but that was the wrong dice though. And it was an accidental click, if oh, I recall. Oh, okay, six. So Freddy's two damage. Right. Sixteen and a nine. I mean, it's six and a seven. Oh, yeah, the seven doesn't apply though, Libby, because at level one, regardless of how many hit dice uh, yeah. granted yeah. as a result, you can only heal the first one. Right, so it'd be the six. Yeah. It's all good. So that, because he's two on two damage anyway, so all good. It's a bit four. Yeah, yeah. Uh, initiative. It's only a Matt's character. <laughs> Briccio. Alrighty. Uh, oh, Briccio. Uh, um. Hmm. Where's the dwarf? Where's the dwarf, dude? There he is. Mm -hmm. I will. Oh. Actions. That's what I meant to say. Um. Hmm. 
and they're wearing chain mail. <laughs> um, I just thought I might sling at him. Okay. <coughs> I don't really need to get rid of that target. We need to target that dude. She's now done, so roll a sling attack. Oof. Unlucky. It is unlucky. You hurl a sling, but it misses. Oh, let's see. Where is he? Um. Oh, that's where Brick Brick is. Yeah. Um. Okay, I'll just stay where I am. Grand Tilda. Alrighty. Grand Tilda is gonna follow through with her threatening. Grimace, and she's gonna move first of all to kind of out of someone else's space though and probably right next to the Dwarven Soldier mm -hmm. and in a whirling leap she attempts to plunge first her sword into the neck of the Dwarven Warrior and then possibly closely followed by a rusty dagger. So I will target him first of all. Ow! Oh. It's all good. Not a hit. Nope. Even though it showed a one, it's because of the difference in dice resolution. Yeah. So. Uh, and then it attempt with the second offhand attack then, I guess. Oh, that one's a creak of fire. That one's a fire. <laughs> Your weapon is damaged to bow string bags, the sword hilt falls off, or a crossbow, or mechanism jams. The weapon can be repaired with a... 10 minutes of work. Okay. So you come in with your second weapon attack and it fails. The hilt basically falls on the weapon. Loosened. Well, it is a rusty dagger, so. Mm. Good thing I picked up that hand axe. Okay. This uh, soldier presses his attack. Nobody is his equivalent apart from the one that's before him who is free. Do you have any disadvantage because I downed him before? Oh, okay. Yep, yeah, I'm going to give him minus a dice. So he pushes himself to his feet. Ooh. Got a critical hit? Apparently. Hang on, I gave him plus one dice. Let's ignore oh. that and go minus one dice. <laughs> and re-roll it. Still hits as he stands. Who's he hitting? Um... Fred. Fred. Oh. And I need to make sure that I remove any damage that Fred received. No, nah, no, nah, that's it. Oh, good. He stands up, rising Bleeding. up with Profuse. his warhammer. Fred gets smacked in the face. Nimlethil. Fred's in trouble. <laughs> Whether you can see that or not from where you are. Poor Fred. Yeah, I might just go and like have a look around here. Okay, him with the back is off, basically. Making her way past the rockfall. Bench press. All right, um. Again, I'll call for this man to submit and I'll attack him um, with a deed to try and uh, 
Take him back down to the ground again. Mm -hmm. So we roll the deed. Don't forget to add uh, 10 dice for flanking. 10 dice? It's not even a thing in this game, I'm just being a jerk. So and surprising. Shut up, game monster. Still attacking him, I think, yes. Okay, swing so heavy, but miss. He ducks underneath the blow. He pays no, no attention to the dwarf at all. <laughs> this is a flurry of whirling weapons. That's right. <laughs> None of them connecting. Fred realizes that the only person he can rely upon is himself. <laughs> yeah, true Fred form. Hmm. True Fred form. Fred's like the male medieval version of a Karen. <laughs> Without deciding whether he's going to chop this guy's feet off with his short sword. Oh, he falls short. He does. He goes, you know what? I may be Karen, but this is what Karens deserve. <laughs> Digger. Giving that blowgun a toot. Kevin! Yeah. Did I you? rolled it. He just rolled a hit. I did. Good. Pay no attention. Oh. oh. And downed him with a dastardly dart. Right in the indeed. eyeball. That really blows. The oh. feather. The flower made all the difference. Wonderful. Okay. <laughs> Where would we be without this flowers? Down hands again. Okay. So, you've made it through the mining entrance. Strip the bodies! <laughs> well, I am going to retrieve my hand axe. You Good idea. You retrieve any weapons that you wish. You look at the bodies. If you're a dwarf, there is chainmail on offer. I'm just thinking I should get some of that chainmail action. How yes, much too big is should. it for a halfling? <laughs> no good for a halfling. Um, Can I? What weapons were they carrying, by the way? Did they have swords. War hammers. War hammers. Oh, yeah, too big for me as well. Um, I think uh, Bridger is attempting to heal Fred by the looks of it. Chamel shield, you do find some silver pieces amongst them and some food. Well, I would have been the first to find them. There, there is 21 silver pieces. Does Fred need a shield? Uh, no. I'm sorry, treasure. Is anybody opposed to the fact that the halfling probably got the silver pieces whilst everyone else was wondering whether Fred was okay? I'm writing it down, though, this is pretty well, I'm pretty sure I immediately took so, this uh, chain mail off the one dude, so... Well, I'm pretty sure I'm watching everybody to see what they all pelted. <laughs> I'll just I'll put the silver in my pouch for now. I'm the kind of person that would share it anyway, so don't stress. I'm not an issue with that. I just... Chain mail. We Battery fifty percent. Games. Okay, so. When can I, anybody else take chain mail? Yep. Basically, the bench, bench press pressed. has peeled the chain mail off him. Didn't say anything whilst the halfling was pilfering the uh, the coin pouch. Coin. And. Uh, who is it? There was some food rations too, correct? Yeah. No details of that. That's silver pieces for everyone. Uh, Digger sat back and just watched what was going on. Um, who see... else could read mail? Oh, the humanity. Anybody? 
No, the, what only, was that? the only person that could fit the chain mail was the dwarf. Uh, oh, that's right. Just and, and that was it. Too, too snug for a human and it's a little too swimming for a halfling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's all that was taken, I believe. The Warhammers are, well, useless for me. You can see Dicker sitting there taking notes. Yeah, look, right. unless we take them to sell later, but then we've got to carry them, I guess. No. This is true. Okay, so now I need to do another lay on hands because it didn't work. All right, work. Can I... Huh? It worked. You just failed <laughs> able to check. Uh, what's Wait. the potential there, though? Oh, your disapproval range has increased. What? Did I miss something? It yeah, failed. so... Uh, yeah, so Bridgio attempted a lay on hands uh, once the combat ended. Yeah, and I did my check, and it said it failed. It was a failure, and mm -hmm. therefore her disapproval rating has increased. Okay. Look, can I do it again? Or... You can. At, at risk of further disapproval, but I feel like your patron, your nature patron, is a uh, really forgiving. We, we can <laughs> shove him full of uh, king's oil. Yeah, why not? Yeah, I do believe you're supposed to. You are supposed to boil it in hot water. Um. Well, I've got a fire going. True. Bench, true. <laughs> bench yeah, press. Can I recommend you take the second chainmail as a potential salvage? Sure, I'm happy to carry whatever I can carry. Okay. Chainmail, bench press can put on. Wearing a chain mail now. I can add another chain mail to myself if you have. Mm hmm. <clears throat> I got it. So, what do we do about healing Fred? Should I try again or are we going to feed him some of that stuff? Give it a go. This is the fun of DCC. It's always nice to see someone's magic like. Fine. Blissfully. <laughs> oh, no, no. Uh, Go for it. it. In this situation, as a cleric, if he was bleeding out heavily, which he is at this point... No, well, he's not. Like, I mean, Freddy is quite... Um, he's not well. He has got, uh, by my count, like 12 hit points of damage. Is that sound no, right? Got nine. Nine up six, 16. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would be 11, right? Because he had two, took two, took seven. Is that how it worked? He's got nine damage. Okay. Okay, well, I'll try to check again if we're not going to deal with the... Whatever it was, King's Foil. Chill. Okay, so That's better. Give me a die of healing. So, 1d12. Just 1d12, yep. He's feeling much better. He's. Fred thanks you for the healing. Mm, sort of. <laughs> well, Great work, team. Now, quickly, let's let's drag the bodies uh, into the out caves, of, out of clear view. Yeah. Okay. Can we put them in one of these pools? Oh, potentially, that's a good idea. It's closer. There's there's a, there's a pool inside. We can put them in. <laughs> no, <laughs> no I can right. see it. Can we, uh, yeah, let's drag the bodies into the muddy pool and w watch them disappear forever. Can you have nine Look. experience points? Oh, brilliant. Yes, you can. Thank you so much. Well, nine experience points. Mm -hmm. Has everybody got nine experience points? Is that what you said? Yep. Pretty much, because we're not going to go any further tonight. That puts us yep. on 19 by my count. Yep. Lucky number nine. Where does Where it go on your sheet? Uh, you... So under class and level, the little magnifying glass there next to what would say what cleric one or whatever you've got, um, 
you click on that magnifying glass and it allows you to enter an XP number in there. Tells you how much you need for your next level up as well. I got 10 on mine. Yeah, so add 9 to it to make 19. Oh. I'm just over type with 19. Got it. Brilliant. That was pretty good fun. Mm -hmm. It was. And it was I think enjoyable. the characters have come out nicely. I'm enjoying it. Likewise. Okay. Well, right then. to reach another possibly 13 encounters, but you know. <laughs> you can't you can't rush these things. Players never go through the encounters. You won't expect them to. True. But anyway, we will point that out. Thank you, people from Twitch. There are plenty more encounters coming. Uh, 